1,942 with 14,000 deaths. Italy's deaths are decreasing for the first time in five weeks. We have a, a, a decrease in the number of deaths that we see, but still as a percentage of the total cases, deaths in Italy still quite high. Mm. Um, Germany at 107,663 cases, but deaths are still as low as 2,000. Yesterday, there were 1,800, so we had an increase of about 200 deaths. Um, China has 62 new cases and two deaths, and again, still imported cases. 62 new imported cases, yeah. and the, de the deaths... Um, three, also from those imported? Yes, from those imported cases. Oh uh, interestingly enough, they still gone ahead and uh, called off the lockdown on Wuhan. Mm -hmm. And so as of this week, because we saw that three weeks ago, they had, um, they had said, okay, fine, lockdown over. And then they saw a lot of the import and they said no. Yeah back to lockdown. But then this week now, they've said, we're going to open it up again and see what then we'll be able to do. So, so lockdown uh, opened within Wuhan. Can yes. people get in and out of Wuhan? Yes. Okay. As from this week. Okay. Um, and then looking at, again, around the world, Japan has called a state of emergency and we saw this happening yesterday, mm -hmm. between yesterday and today, with the cases that they've seen and they said, abs and it's state of emergency plus lockdown, absolutely nobody goes anywhere for anything. State of emergency, what exactly does that mean? Um, this is now all hands on deck in terms of what they need to do. They previously had not initiated any kind of lockdown per se. Mm. What they had done was that they had closed schools and they had encouraged people to work from home. And then they were now giving parents, you know, a kind of like a stipend mm. because they had to then stay at home because there were no au pairs or such available. But now in this case, they say absolutely not. No Nobody's movement. going anywhere. So basically, it appears like the state of emergency is uh, what they're using as powers to enforce to release Because, yes, powers to enforce and then also re release much needed and funding. Release. Because what they're doing is giving each family a thousand eight hundred dollars per month uh, to be able to live. One hundred G's a month. That's right. One hundred. Everybody in one thousand eight hundred, almost two hundred G's. Get it right. <coughs> every per family. Yes. Every. Ev and family. we're not talking about poor families. Every, every citizen. Every family. Yeah. Every family. So All this right. is why they call the state of emergency in order for them to release to the money. these these funds to do this. Mm. So they're not joking with it because in just. Two days, they had a surge of 162 cases um, within Japan, and these came off the 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 cruise ship, the Princess. And so, because of that, they said, "No, we're not joking around this thing anymore." Wow. So that's Germany, what's the status again? Germany. Yesterday, we saw 100, uh, 1,810 deaths so far from the 107,000. Uh, we've seen an increase of those to now 200. So they're at 2,010 deaths as of today. Um, but still, the number is at 107,000 infected. Um, but they're still managing the situation, as it were, mm -hmm. because their neighbors have um, almost 15 times the number of deaths and with the same numbers, 115,000 in Italy, 100 and, uh, sorry, 140,000 in Italy, uh, 135,000 in Spain, 14,000 deaths in Spain, 17,000 deaths in Italy. Same numbers in Germany of 107,000, but 2,000 deaths. Wow, okay. So there's something that they're doing that we ought to pay attention Adopt. to. Pay attention yep. to. And that thing of just saying, you know, Germans and their efficiency, that's why they're doing that. I mean, why can't everybody else be as efficient? Mm. <laughs> is, it, uh, is it? Anyway, and America is... Uh, America's uh, having a hard time with this now. Of the same, a cruise ship then came out and all of the crew, save for one, um, in, in the US now, and this was in the state of New York where they were able to test, the entire crew of 263 was positive Tested for positive. COVID. Uh, so 260, yeah. So, so 200 of 263, 262 were positive. And this is the same cruise ship that had made its way around to Japan, where they're having this problem now. Mm. And uh, now in the US with this issue. So uh, they're having a, this is it's a sticky deal for them right now. My goodness. Yep. Um, well, uh, and, and the numbers and in we the see they're affected, yeah, 400,412 400, affected now in the U.S. Um, infected, rather, and with deaths at 12,854. Uh, okay, CT, let's yes. come back to Africa. Give us today's proverb. Today's proverb, it is the crooked wood that shows the best sculptor. 
It is the crooked wood that shows the best sculptor. Sculptor, sculptor. Sculptor. The guy who, the guy who is doing who the sculpting. that wood so that it looks beautiful or it is artistic, that guy. Ah. Uh, yes. So his prowess comes out of the kind of work that he... When you have a piece of wood that, you know, sort of like defies logic, it's like all over the place, it's mm. not straight. Now, so to make something out of it, mm. it shows that you really have expertise. You're, you are good. Yes. You're good at what you do. You are good at what you do. This, again, is one of these African sayings. Mm. And um, there are many other sayings that are similar to it. Mm. But... Uh, one of the things that I think people say often, uh, when the going gets stuff, the tough get going. That tough one. get going. That is the, a simple, uh, the simplest way I can actually put this across. Mm. Yes. In these times, we shall see who's good. Yes, yeah. we shall see. Because this particular wood is really, really yeah. crooked. In this crooked wood times, yes. people shall emerge. Sculptures shall like Ali Hassan Joho. We shall see them. Ali are emerging. We shall see them. Let's take a look at the headlines. Um, what we have in the standard this morning is tragedy of Kenya's empty grain stores. Our nation's strategic food stores are empty. Empty. Empty mm. is, a, is a big word. A grim reality at a time when pressure is piling on the government in a case of a full coronavirus lockdown to, face the, to feed the most vulnerable Kenyans who are 14 million in official statistics. That's 14 million, the number of Kenyans who, according to the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics data, are food insecure. This means they'll be unable to stock up should they be locked down in stepped-up COVID-19 measures. Hey. 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 Okay. Um, well, I, well I, I'm looking at these numbers, that, though, on the standard. The number of the who have been classified as poor in the rural areas are 10.4 million. In the peri-urban are 965,000. In core-urban are 3.16 um, 3 million. And now that those are the ones that are going down into the, into the counties. So I'm thinking, yes, 14 million are classified as food insecure across the country. Hmm. Um, you know the thing is though the nightmare. thing is though that these numbers although we're being greeted with them again today they were existent before this food insecurity issue didn't start today in times of COVID this was the case a while ago uh, now that we see after um, Noah Wekesa told us a couple of weeks ago that actually you know there are no reserves mm. we don't have anything to bank on yeah this then is coming to say that this, the that uh, the stores of grain are empty, then giving fuel towards the decision that uh, Peter Munya made to import the two million white and the two million yellow for human and animal consumption, um, because we don't have anything. Uh, not that, uh, and even when farmers were crying foul that why don't you buy from us, basically what he said is that you know. Uh, in order to feed the country in the manner in which we need to, we don't have enough. What you're saying that we would be able to then buy from you is not adequate to feed the country and we don't have anything in reserve. But this is not something that happened. It's not even something that happened this year. It's not even something that happened six months ago. You can't say that in the span of six months, a country then goes from secure to insecure, from stable to inst in unstable. This has been the state of affairs for a while. This yeah. is what it was. Um, yeah, we have many problems in this country, eh? We don't have food, we don't have water, we then enter can't corona. fight a disease, we don't have health care. We, we, have, we have MPs, why MPs sittings were stopped. And this is the other headline and then on the standard in Texas to page 9. And it says, there are reports that, um, you remember there was mass testing of MPs last week. So there are reports that some of them have tested positive. Uh, in fact, some headlines suggesting as many as 17 or 19 mm. or more. Uh, have tested positive of COVID-19. Do we know the numbers who actually got tested? Mm. No, we don't. Yes, we. The, the numbers Total of those number. who, the, the numbers of those who got tested, um, not reported. About 50 MPs and parliamentary staff have been subjected to the tests. 50 okay. have been subjected to the test. Right, MPs and the parliamentary staff were, went through a test, and and now. F some of them, uh, some of the new confirmed cases mm. are reportedly coming from these MPs. I don't know why there's still a back and forth, you know, following up with the, the company that did the testing. 
and following up is also with the leadership of uh, the assemblies, the National Assembly and the Senate and the MPs themselves. Those who have tested positive are tweeting about it and saying, I tested positive, yeah, exactly. like Mutula Kilonzo Jr. I tested and those, negative, rather. Uh, no, negative, yes, yeah. yes, like Mutula Kilonzo Jr. And those that have tested positive, if there are any that have tested positive, have not come, have not come out to say, you know what, guys, I've tested positive and this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. We haven't heard that. We haven't heard Are we that likely yet. to, though? Well, I, I think so. I think maybe we're likely to hear when they say one, I'm positive. One or two will say. Mm, okay. Well, one or two will say. Not all of them, but maybe if one or two test positive, they'll say. But if they think that they had not gone into quarantine, mm. they did not observe the quarantine measures, they, they will not, will not out speak out. Yeah. They, will not. they will not. They have seen uh, what's, happening what's happening to Zaburi. Mm. So the numbers in the country, 172 confirmed after 14 new cases were announced yesterday. Um, all golf clubs shut and all open sporting arenas to adhere to social distancing guidelines. So well, it's clear that some of the confirmed cases then came from such situations. Of course. Yeah. I mean, we know what, one of the persons who died the other day was the chairman of a Mombasa golf club. Mm. And he had even traveled to Nairobi. We had even seen pictures over the weekends of uh, some of these uh, golf clubs mm. uh, and country clubs were full and the mm. parking was full, which mm. means that people are not observing social distancing. Mm. People are not observing social distancing. So there was a lot of, you know, of, of all these things happening. Mm. Seven, the number of recoveries after three more uh, patients tested negative for uh, coronavirus. And the president says lockdown is the last option. He wants the government to, uh, he says that the government will not hes hesitate to institute it if Kenyans fail to adhere to these measures. Mm. Kenyans are failing to adhere, Mr. To these president. Measures. Come yeah. on. What do you have in the nation? Well, breakthrough, mass testing coming soon is what we see on the, t on the front page. Thanks to a major innovation by researchers at Kenya Medical Research Institute, mass testing for the coronavirus will soon be possible, giving the country the true picture of infections. Now, if you go to the details of this particular story, um, we see that it would be possible for members of the public to then go in and get a test, mm -hmm. which would be a rapid test, and people then will be able to find out... Um, what their status is. The country's previous battles against HIV and TB made it possible for experts to develop a new testing machine. So this machine is, it exists. And so they're saying then it would be then possible for them to extrapolate the same to um, COVID-19 mm. and then be able to um, uh, get the details for each individual and, and between three and 15 minutes. So, um, um, from the current 600 tests per day, the innovation at Kemri will see Kenya's process get re get results for at least 35,000 samples in 24 hours. So Kenya will use the COBAS 6800 or the 8800 HIV viral load machines and the GenExpert used for points of care testing for tuberculosis. According to Professor Matilu Mwao, Kemri Busia director, the COBUS machine is able to run as many as 5,000 tests in a day. In the unlikely event that we get to that point, we will be ready. So Kemri is taking the bull by the horns, as it were, and it's saying, you know thing. what? We need to know across board who um, is unwell mm. uh, at this point and then see what we can do about it. Mm. The easier thing is to have more and more people tested so that people know their um, know the situation. Indeed, it's 18 minutes after 6. Let's take a look at um, the weather and then the conversation continues. Good morning. Twenty four seven around the world, non stop. This is Spice FM. Classic soul, R and B, smooth jazz, neo soul, and nostalgic ballads. Make some noise. Yeah. You're listening to Spice FM.
The weather so with Spice Nairobi, FM. Starting off this morning at 17 degrees, it's mostly cloudy. Uh, chances are we'll continue this way through the day. Then high highs of 26 and lows of 16. It's 14 degrees in Akuru and clear skies this morning, likely to be the same through the day. Highs of 28 and lows of 14. Nyeri at 14 degrees, we partly cloudy. Showers expected later on in the day with highs of 25 and lows of 14. Eldoret at 14 degrees will be clear skies throughout. Highs of 26 and lows of 30. Kisumu is partly cloudy at 21 degrees, highs of 31 and lows of 19. It's 28 degrees in Malindi and partly cloudy, highs of 33 and lows of 27. Mombasa, 27 degrees, is clear skies throughout the day, highs of 32 and lows of 26. Kampala, 21 degrees, it's going to be partly cloudy today, looking into East Africa, highs of 27 and lows of 21. Dar es Salaam is hazy and this morning it's some shallow fog at 26 degrees. Thunderstorms expected for later parts of the afternoon with highs of 32 and lows of 25. Johannesburg at 11 degrees is clear this morning. Highs of 21 and lows of 10. Take a look into Lagos. It's already thunderstorms this morning at 27 degrees, likely to carry on through most of the day with highs of 33 and lows of 26. Paris is clear skies at 13 degrees today, highs of 24 and lows of 11. New York is cloudy and rain showers will continue later on with highs of 18 and lows of 11. Wrapping it up in London and partly cloudy at 11 degrees, showers expected later with highs of 23 and lows of 8. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 23 minutes after 6. Good morning. This is the situation. It's Kenya's biggest conversation. The live stream is up. Spice FM KE on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter as well as www.spicefm.co.ke Share that with your friends and let them all join in this conversation. Throughout the show you can call in and uh, contribute to the conversation 0719 012 That's 0719 012 Remember you can get the standard delivered to your doorstep and also you can download the standard e-paper app from Google Play Store mm -hmm. and Apple App Store and just one subscription fee you get to access the standard newspaper the bold and factual newspaper from anywhere in the world that story of um, uh, the test kits mm -hmm. that's what Dr. Marcy Correa told us she was yes. going to work on yesterday and yeah. she's even written a story it's on page 3 the test will be designed like rapid HIV diagnostic kits which will be able to give results in 3 to 15 minutes that's a good thing mm. 3 to 15 minutes of you know get tested pop your get positive your or your negative let's take the next course of action it's a very good thing uh, we'll be speaking to her this morning and she'll, of course, give us these details of what is happening. The test will be designed like the rapid HIV kids. Um, the uh, Professor Mwau, this is uh, Professor Matilu Mwau, is an infectious diseases professor and a deputy director for diagnostic laboratories at the Camry. He says the accuracy of the test kits is the most important part of the process. Mm. Being careful not to have a test kit that will be positive for other coronaviruses and not COVID-19 that causes uh, the, the SARS-CoV-2 that causes COVID-19. Globally, the accuracy of the rapid diagnostic kits has been between 30 and 94 percent in detecting the coronavirus. Mm. 30 and 94 percent. It's a uh, huge disparity. Quite accurate, yes. Yeah, There's a huge disparity as yeah. well. 30 percent. Some are thirty percent accurate, others are ninety four percent. Yeah, quite accurate in terms of how far <laughs> the disparity <laughs> is in mm. this sense. I mean, so you kind of go in knowing that uh, maybe I. My results. So the, the question is, if it's 30 to 94 percent, mm. why would I go and take the test? And I cannot be sure if my test then will give 30 percent accuracy or 94 percent. accuracy. Yeah, yeah. I go in not knowing. Mm. So I mean, it's quite huge numbers. Which is why now he's saying that they really need to make sure that Professor Matilu Mwau is saying we really need to make sure that when we're making these kits, we are bringing you the best kit. Uh, they say they have the materials and the capacity to produce the hundreds of thousands of test kits per day mm. through its production unit stationed at its Nairobi headquarters. Imagine we have had all these things. All in this the time. We have the capacity. <laughs> we have the capacity. Mm. It's, we have very many positives in this country. And then enter politicians. We have many negatives <gasps> when they're in charge of things. And then it all goes upside oh, down. Oh, come on. Yes. 
Brace yourselves for coming storm, Kagwe now cautions. Health CS says the worst is yet to come as the 14 new confirmed cases are announced. Um, he says that uh, stricter measures are to arrest the spread if we're going to stop this thing. The government told Kenyans yesterday as it confirmed the next 14 cases. It brings to the total, the national tally, to 172. Um, labs are improving their testing capacity and ability. At the same time, he says... If Kenyans don't adhere to what we've put in place to curb this thing, because at the end of the day, what we're trying to do, yes, is flatten the curve. Mm. We're not trying to, we're trying to get to the plateau and then go down. Mm -hmm. If Kenyans don't do what they've been asked to do, we're going to have to enforce stricter measures mm. to make sure that it is done. And we don't mind doing that. Mm. Uhuru said the same thing. If this is if that's what is going to be required at some point, uh, we he will says, tighten the screws. We will tighten the screws. We just keep Everybody's tightening shouting lockdown. We? Uh, we're not there yet, he says. But if that is what is required to flatten this curve, mm. we're going to do it. We'll, we'll have to. Yeah. So some measures that were taken yesterday, of course, uh, closing the golf of the sporting arenas and golf clubs. Um, that's one thing that, why didn't it happen earlier? Mm, it if have. you close the gyms because people are congregating, if you, you close the bars because gathering. people co congregate, yeah. <laughs> you've stopped social gathering because people are congregating, then you still leave the golf clubs oh. open. Uh, what have you done? Because yeah. this is what has happened. We saw even uh, in this uh, very beautiful forest areas of ours, like Karura Forest, mm. people were really going there. So people are feeling, well, we've been locked indoors for so long. We can exercise. We need to go and exercise. Karura is big, it's expansive. It's a good thing. I mean, I, we should be able to ac access it. But people are, if people are still going to congregate mm. and that is not being properly controlled and managed, then we see a lockdown again. Yeah. Yep. It, it's 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 unfortunate. It's going to happen. Mm. Um, it, look, if things remain as they are, uh, everything remaining constant right now, yep. it's going to happen. Okay, wearing a mask is key to fighting the coronavirus. This is according to the World Health Organization. They've revised their stand. Good. Whereas two days ago they said, look, unless you're taking care of somebody mm. who is ill, um, they actually it's there's no need for you to wear one. Uh, but now they've gone back on this and they're saying that uh, it's come months after dithering on the issue despite mounting evidence. With a daily spike in the cases of the virus, wearers of masks, in addition to other preventive measures like staying at home, washing hands and keeping a social distance, might help to slow down the spread of COVID-19. Yesterday, the World Health Organization revised its stand on masks, acknowledging that wearing a medical mask is one of the prevention measures that can limit the spread of certain respiratory viral diseases, including COVID-19. This came after months of dithering, dithering rather, on the issue, despite mounting evidence that countries that adopted the use of masks for everyone, such as China, Japan, Thailand, South Korea and Taiwan, had slowed down the initial march of COVID-19 as compared to the United States and Europe. Mm. So the evidence had presented itself. It was clear that this could help. So now the World Health Organization is telling the world that, uh, okay, please, please go ahead and wear use masks. it. And they should have listened to what's that Eastern European country that uh, uh, instituted these measures and they reported some progress. Mm. Um, you know, and they were saying, this is what has happened in our country. In fact, there were videos going around viral mm. saying, this is what happened in our country. Our government said, everybody, when you're going out, just wear a mask. Whatever, I do, whatever little measure, this is just one of those incremental measures. Yep. I, I think it's a good thing that now we talk about people going out and wearing masks and this should be enforced. However, the issue of availability of the masks and the quality and the best quality of a mask and what mm. you should look out for in a mask needs to be very well communicated. Again, we go back into the communication, the communication that's coming out. We are still talking about the same advert that's selling at coronavirus disease. Mm. Uh, uh, disease. Mm -hmm. We should be having a lot of more information, more information that breaks it down, tells you now wear a mask, tells you now these are the areas that have been blocked. You mm. cannot attend this. These are the new measures that have been instituted. This is what you do should you find yourself in this kind of situation. Uh, I think in terms of communication, we are still not doing so well. We're not, no. In, in terms of spreading the information out there, no. Mm. And it's not, look, at, at the risk of sounding, you know, <laughs> trying to comfort the situation, it's not just in Kenya, but around the world where, look, we heard from um, one of the, uh, the journalists in Nigeria yesterday that some people still don't even have an understanding of what this COVID thing yeah. is. What, what are we talking yeah. about? What is it? Before you start telling me to wash my hands and maintain social distance and then keep 
what are we talking about in the first place? So in terms of communication messaging that's coming from the government, who is mandated mm. to share this? It's the, a very poor job is being done. And I'm sure if if the government actually sat down with the Media Owners Association, mm. they, they've incorporated the chairman of the Media Owners Association into the fund, Washiro Aroro, they can have a conversation and say, you guys, this is, nation is launching today a public health campaign, yeah. right? So they could have just walked to the media houses and say, this is the information. You guys are the experts. You guys this. have, this is, do it. Mm. And spread the information, ensure that everybody gets this kind of information. Mm. Media houses would do that. I mean, we are here every morning. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of information. If we, we had have. the information, yeah. we'd we'll be giving it out. Uh, yes, the, the issue of cost and payment, but that can be worked out. Shouldn't stand in definitely, the way. Definitely, definitely can be worked out unless somebody wants to eat something. So they're mm. looking at how they can make some money out of this. This is um, where, where always our problems come in. Take a look at the traffic shortly and then we see what else is happening in the news. Remember, you can download the standard e-paper app from Google Play Store and Apple App Store and then you get to access the standard from wherever you are around the world. Remember, sh shortly I'll be giving you the numbers that you can call so that... Um, you can get the standard newspaper delivered right to your doorstep. Now you cannot leave, you cannot enter Nairobi, you cannot leave, you cannot enter uh, Kuala, uh, Kilifi and Mombasa. Also, you've been advised as much as possible, stay at home, then you need the newspaper, it will be brought to you. And it's a safe to handle newspaper. 29 minutes to 7 o'clock, good morning. All right, smooth roads, clear roads, actually, wherever you look today, looking at Nairobi, and um, comes into effect that still the roadblocks are up. So, yeah, I think we are all in line when it comes to places that we can or cannot go to. Um, come Thika Road to Waiakiwe after ABC, um, then going towards James, James Gishuru and Gong Road. There was a bit of a hold up there today, but that has opened up right now. You should be fine. There's no jam on Waiakiwe then now heading into the city and heading out of the city as well. Mombasa Road looks good all the way from the SGR. It's flowing very well right into the CBD. Thika Road on going towards Thika Town. Quite a number of police on the road there to enforce the law. So understand that right past Blue Post you're not going to be able to get in and out of Nairobi. We need to understand exactly where these roadblocks are or where the stoppages are from the NMA, which is Nairobi metropolitan area, so you understand where it is you can or cannot go. We'll give you more information as we go along. Spice of MKE is how you can reach us on Twitter. We'll see what the roads look like in about a half hour, and we'll let you know. 0719 600 Spice up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Morning, this is the situation of 94.4 Spice Remember, FM, you can Nairobi. Paper app or also, you can get it uh, delivered right to your doorstep. If you're in the Nairobi metropolitan region, now you know where the Nairobi metropolitan region starts and ends. You can call Anthony Mutunga 0702 905 941. That's 0702 905 941. Mm -hmm. For those outside the Nairobi metropolitan region, especially heading towards the Mount Kenya region and the coast, you can call Ben. Benson Getao, 702 705 That's 702 705 In Rift Valley and the Nyanza regions, Marco Diembo, 776 756 
1-800-222-107. The, the standard newspaper will be delivered right to your doorstep. This is a bold and a factual newspaper. We're mm -hmm. taking a look at the headlines. What do you have, Ndu? Well, we see more governors now uh, talking about how main hospitals within counties will be reserved for the COVID-19 patients in efforts to stop the pandemic. Uh, Governor Muthomi Juki was, um, has reserved four public hospitals in Tharakanithi um, for COVID-19 and referral cases only. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a press statement yesterday, he said that other patients visiting Chuka County Referral Hospital, as well as Magutuni, Marimanti and Gibunga, um, sub-county hospitals will be required to produce a referral note before they are attended to. We want to reduce overcrowding in our four main hospitals handling COVID-19 cases so that they can focus on the pandemic. And so he's talked about specialized services as well and says that those seeking specialized services such as di dialysis, CT scans, digital x-ray, ultrasound imaging and cancer screening will continue getting them. So we see more and more trying to... Um, at least re reserve the spaces that are available in the event that more cases will pop up per county. Mm. Um, whereas before yesterday, there were just four counties that were affected. I think we have two new entrants now uh, with Mandera and uh, there was one other county. I need to uh, be sure which, where the other case came from. Mm -hmm. But Mandera made its entrance as well. Mm. So now we see more counties then being affected uh, by the virus. So I think more and more people are stepping up to the plate as it were to uh, get things in place. It's good to know. It's good to see this. And I think um, a lot of this information should also be coming at the national government level when, mm. we are making, when we're getting this briefing by Mutai Kagwe. Uh, Governor Kuti should be coming to say, this is what is happening in the counties. Mm. And basically just saying in Tharakanithi, this is what Tharakanithi has done. Mm. This is what Mombasa has done. This is what Machakos has done. Mm. This is what, you know, it's important that we get that information f from everywhere because... Um, you can't just leave this at, you know, the people of the Rakanidi will just be knowing these where the hospitals <laughs> are. Let's just spread this information. Police are issuing a public caution. Beware of thugs posing as pandemic surveillance team. Mm. Hey. <laughs> you see already. Hey. <laughs> people are creative. Thugs masquerading as officials from multi-agency teams tracing suspected coronavirus cases are on the loose, according to the police. They're advising the public to verify the identities of people who call their mobile phones or visit their homes claiming to be pursuing coronavirus cases. In Nairobi, in Nairobi pss, mm -hmm. reports showed that thugs invaded homes in Runda, Lovington and Ruaka. Yesterday, a man reported on social media that he found a car blocking his gate. They claimed that they had followed the signal of a lady named Carol who had left quarantine and she had COVID-19. Luckily, the guard had talked to someone else in the compound who told him not to let them in and said the same. They were not wearing any uniform and they had no ID. Be careful, anyone. Police spokesman Charles Owino has asked those affected to call police hotlines 999, 112, and 911. Did you know those were the hotlines? I did not. 999, 112, <laughs> 911. Um, <laughs> the National Multi-Agency Command Center on Operation Kinga Corona is based in Embakasi, Nairobi. Oh, I also did not know that. Mm. Owino says the police are working hard to contain crime. Mm. Do you understand that there are those incidents where some people are taking advantage? We are going to deal with them. <laughs> this is serious, man. It is. I mean, people are calling you and saying, you know, I'm going to talk about the pandemic now. When the cases shoot up and people are on proper lockdown, this is what's going to be happening. If people are already thinking about it now, I mean, unfortunately, innovative ways to then defraud people yeah. or innovative ways to then uh, met about any kind of loss on people. That's, it's quite unfortunate mm. that you see a situation as dire as this and then people are taking advantage of it to the point whereby people's livelihoods are then put at risk. It's an issue. It is an issue. So now um, are we know talking about that. And I mean, like we can just, we're going to try and get him uh, to talk to us later on today and hear exactly what it is that he's asking mm. uh, Kenyans to do or, or what to do be vigilant um, about. Um, in the same vein, another story making it today, mm. hundreds face nightmare over abrupt travel ban. Some travelers sneaked into Nairobi area though through Panya routes, as it said, mm. to evade police manning roadblocks. Who knew such places existed where you would climb a hill and hop, skip and a jump away, you would be able to get into the county. Mm. And I think now, because of that video, I think we've seen now uh, more stringent measures or more blocks put in place. However, dozens of people were on Monday caught unawares by the travel ban in and out of Nairobi metropolitan area affected by the state. Um, while the cessation of movement to and from Nairobi was affected on Monday, that of the coastal counties begins today. 
parts of Kiambu, Kajiado and Machakos counties were considered to be under the enemy. Hundreds of people who had traveled to Nairobi made frantic efforts to avoid being caught in the travel ban. But for many, it was too late. And like we said, there are people who live in one county and work in another. Yeah. So if you're working in that county, you were unable to go home that day. Uh, if you were if you if you were at home and were supposed to go to work the next day, you were then unable to report That's to work. It. And these are some of the things that were saying needed to be looked at. My job is in another county. I'm able to live in another area because of yep. affordability or whatever. Yep. How then do I go to work, or how do I make it home? <laughs> so, I mean, this is the conundrum that people are facing right now. Take what are we leave. supposed to do? Take leave. Talk to your employer. Take leave. Okay. Basically. What if you're but, at work? But if you're the employer. No, no, you're at work and you <laughs> live in another county. What are you supposed to do? Yeah, well, you're going to live thick. at work. Things are thick. Yeah. Some of that information needed to have come out very clearly. And, you know, well, sometimes you look at it and you're like, you're like okay, you could not have thought about all the possible scenarios. Mm. But then you should have sat down and thought of many scenarios like those. You know people. When mm. you're talking about, you know, uh, the people who sat and made that decision, mm. you know people who live outside Nairobi. Mm. You must know people you who live. Know. You must know somebody who that lives can, uh, who lives somewhere, you know, in, down with. in Moor Hills. Yeah. You know somebody who lives beyond um, uh, b- beyond Ongatarongai mm. or <laughs> well, beyond Kiserian. And they keep coming to Nairobi once in a while. And they need to come to Nairobi. Yeah, true. Issues of people who are sick and they require medication. Hmm. Treatment. What's going to happen? Yeah. yeah. Those those scenarios should have they should have played out those very many scenarios and said, all right, so this is how we're gonna address this. Personal but just issuing blankets. Answers. Yeah. Things need answers here in terms of what's but interestingly enough is that many people these routes, people know these routes. The ways routes. in which to get into Yeah, yeah, yeah. Panya, you know, Wait, panya people, routes are common. It, people got into the city. People are still getting into the city. Panya today, routes, tomorrow. you see the thing is, eh, those panya routes, they are not panya routes. <laughs> Before yesterday, they were just the routes. Yeah. This is how I cross over from here to that side. Mm. So I just crossed. The only thing I know is that because of uh, taking a matatu, I can take a matatu from here. Mm. But if I wanted just to walk, I could walk this way. So they're not really panya routes. They're mm-hmm. just, it's the paths that are already oh, in existence. Uh, <laughs> okay. Somebody, a friend of mine in the corporate sector was telling me, you know, when we have these kind of meetings, like in the big companies, mm. and you want to roll out a campaign, you sit down and you play out all possible scenarios. Mm. You play them out. You're like, so what What about could this? happen? What about this? What about the other? What if this question, let's actually come up with the FAQs, the frequently asked questions. Mm-hmm. This is how we're going to answer these uh, uh, questions. This is it. This is how we're going to address these emerging concerns. What else could emerge? How shall we mitigate? Do that in, at the planning stage. Mm. When you roll out your campaign or you roll out your measures, you already have sorted out very many of those. So the ones that got away a few. Yeah, and then you don't leave anybody in a mess, <laughs> essentially. Yeah, or you don't yeah, leave yeah. many questions that your initial communication then would not essentially answer. Yep. Right. The world's billionaires join fight against the virus by donating money and equipment. Jack Ma has done it again. Um, he has made his second donation of protective gear to several African countries that include Kenya. And we have some of the world's wealthiest people having not been left behind. The likes of Jack Ma, Bill Gates, um, Jim Radcliffe, Strive Masiwa, Anand Mahindra, Mark Zuckerberg. Kenya is among the countries set to receive equipment to aid the fight of the virus against the virus from Chinese billionaire Jack Ma, who is also the co-founder of Alibaba Group. Um, In a tweet, Ma said the donations are already on the way. The donations are to be distributed to 54 countries in Africa, including five, which include 500 ventilators, 200,000 suits and face shields, Mm. 2,000 thermometers, 1 million swabs and extraction kits, and 500,000 gloves. The first donation came on the 14th, on the 24th of March, which included testing kits, protective gear, and medical equipment. He has pledged $1.5 billion to help develop a COVID-19 vaccine. On the 13th of March, he announced a donation of 500,000 te- testing kits mm-hmm. and 1 million masks to none other than the United States. Um, he also sent medical equipment and test kits to Italy and to other countries across Latin America and Asia. So he's uh, spreading his footprint. Yep. Bill Gates and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation fund the are set to fund the construction of factories that will manufacture seven coronavirus ma- vaccines. Strive Maziwa, um, Zimbabwe's richest man, announced he would pay health workers subsidies of between f- um, five thousand Zimbabwe dollars to ten thousand for six months 
Nazis to end a strike that threatened to cripple healthcare, realizing that they needed the doctors on the front line. He said, this okay, was fine. A good and Let it me was pay in January. you the money. Yeah. I'm going to pay, pay you the for money six that you months. Need. Come back to work. For six months, yep. people are being paid by one person, not mm-hmm. the government, one person. Mark Zuckerberg, $100 million. Uh, this was a grant of the equivalent of 10.6 billion shillings to aid small business impacted by COVID-19. The giants committed $20 million in donations to the United Nations Foundation, the World Health Organization, and the U.S. Centers for Disease Control. Uh, so he announced that Facebook would donate its emergency reserve of 720,000 masks to health workers. Jim Radcliffe, the British billionaire and chemical engineer, has set up uh, to help with the war against the virus in his chemical powerhouse. He has begun the manufacture of hand sanitizers, one in mm. England and another one in Germany. So, I mean, mm. across the board, mm. people are helping out. Aliko Dangote cannot be left out. Africa's richest person donated 200 million naira, approximately 54.5 million shillings to prevent the spread of COVID in Nigeria. In Kenya, there's a man called Narendra Raval. He is the chairman of Defki Group. Mm -hmm. He has donated 100 million shillings worth of oxygen to all government hospitals in Mm -hmm. the country. He has confirmed that uh, that donation. Remember, this man has also been uh, been co-opted into the fund that was set up by the president, the the disaster relief fund. So he's also a member of that. But Narendra Raval has said, well, I'm I'm getting in here and this is my contribution to it. Mm -hmm. Now that the fund is operational and um, they've started receiving some money, let's see the other kind of uh, billionaires who come out will come out in in the country to contribute towards this because all hands need to be on deck on this one mm. this this is one of those where all hands must be on deck that's true Magoha has plans in the event of extended shutdown okay that's this what is he interesting says because parents are up in arms and mm. they're asking already what's going on mm. So uh, he says he has instructed all state departments under his ministry to propose what needs to be done under the coronavirus worst case scenarios. The standard has established that uh, all PSAs and education ministry have been instructed to audit their sections and make proposals on contingency plans in the face of a possible extended coronavirus shutdown. Cost implications, inherent gaps and possible interventions are being drawn to ensure the ministry is not caught off guard in the event of the virus is contained or if it progresses beyond May. Already basic education is weighing options on what needs to be done under the mm. home learning programs. The Ministry of Education has also implemented an out-of-class lessons program through online TV and radio channels. Now, um, as schools officially close this Friday, the standard has established the ministry is mulling whether the lessons should continue or the timetable can be adjusted. By the end of this week, schools will have lost three weeks under first term that started January 6th. Mm. And the president ordered schools closed from uh, 16th for 30 days. So let's see what the ministry comes out and says. Hmm. Hmm. Many questions. Should it all be abolished? Should examinations be rescheduled? Will students lose a year? Kind of thing. Questions those questions, <laughs> really, really. And, and those are not easy questions. No. It's not an easy question for anybody, even for Mogoha himself, to come and say, all right, so you guys, uh, this year... Candidates, zero. Forget. So if you're in Standard 5, you, you're still in Standard 5 next year. Mm. Uh, those, are, those are tough, tough mm. decisions to be made. Or what happens to the exams? Mm. Especially the million plus... KCP, KCSC, and then another nine hundred thousand or so for KCSE. What happens to those? Uh, do, do we take care of them? Do we have plans for them and contingencies? Decisions, decisions, decisions. This one is where the Ministry of Education, working from home but constantly on Zoom <laughs> and other platforms. <laughs> Eleven minutes to seven o'clock. The situation continues. We are taking a look at the headlines. Remember, you can watch our live stream on www.spicefm.co.ke. Also, on our social media platforms, we live stream on Facebook, Spice FM KE, on Twitter, Spice FM KE. We're also live streaming on YouTube, Spice FM KE. Join the conversation. Our Instagram handle is Spice FM KE as well. Good morning. FM Melindy
online, mobile, and on radio. Instagram at Spice FM KE. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up so yourself. We've been talking about this on this show for many, many, many days. And today, today our voice was on. Mornings done right. Level of 94.4 Spice FM. Worry. The Ministry of Health estimates that there will be at least 10,000 confirmed COVID cases in Kenya by the end of this month. That is frightening, not just because it could be you, your relative or friend, but also because the figure could get much higher unless there is a complete attitude change towards COVID-19. The government is outlining stringent measures, but truth be told, a greater number of Kenyans don't appreciate the magnitude of the danger facing us. Most of them believe Europe and America, where people are dying in the thousands daily, are far removed from them. Hence, they are safer here. Uh, in many towns across the country, unscrupulous business people are seeing taking an opportunity to make the extra coin, selling masks for as much as 200 bob. This fly in the face of any endeavor to fight the, the uh, COVID-19. It shocked the nation recently to learn that the government had been so lax to allow people in the isolation centers to mingle freely and even hold parties. Mm. Ideally, these centers should have lined up, lived up to their name. Failure to keep social distance, especially for those in quarantine, is inimical to the fight against the pandemic. Already the government is taking measures to alleviate ravages of COVID-19 that would have been deemed unconstitutional. Um, but counties have been denied funds and they lack ventilators, personal protective equipment, masks, gloves, adequate beds for lack of funds. Should COVID-19 be confirmed there, they'll be sitting ducks in the counties. Wow. Mm. Remember, counties are supposed to be receiving money and this is the money that they're going to dedicate towards COVID-19. Yep. Now, counties have been told, no, there's no money coming to you. All the money is being run from the national government. So if the, for example, we are seeing what Mombasa, what Tarakanithi, yeah. Tarakanithi have said, these hospitals we've set them aside for, for COVID addressing COVID-19, yeah. but they need to get in the equipment that's required to fight. They don't have the money. And it's coming from national they've government. Got to borrow, to come, they've yeah. got to beg mm. the national government to release some funds or to release the, the required resources to, to run these facilities. Uh, then it just becomes an exercise uh, almost in futility because then what essentially will happen? You could say, and you could have all these grand plans, you want to do it at county level, mm. but until, you know, until Big Brother says, I will give you this kind of help, it's not going to happen, unfortunately. If they listen to you in the first place. Mm. You see, the national government and the county government have had this relationship. Huh? Anything coming from the county government is like, these guys are just bugging us. Leave them alone. <laughs> Leave them alone. We'll right? be the ones to we'll handle this. We'll handle this. And they're not handling it. If the outcry is loud enough, perhaps then somebody will need to do something at this point. Because I real, I understand that, you know, even coming out of the Ministry of Health, coming from national government, in the same breath, mm. national government has said, county government needs to do their job. All of us need to come together to make sure we fight against this thing. Now, unfortunately, the fuel that runs this vehicle is funds. And if there are no mm. funds, this thing is not going If there's anywhere. no money, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. So if you're not giving money not to happening. the county governments, mm. what are you? What is this that you're talking about? You know, we are running this thing from the national level. Everything is national, national, national. We are nationalizing everything. But then you're also telling everything. the county to do their part. But you're telling counties, we expect you to. Mm. It's not. It can't happen. I can it, tell you that now. It will not happen. Mm. Uh, also, the measures that have been announced by the president, uh, according to the, a, a story on the nation, nation page eight. It's not gonna. It's not gonna work. <laughs> it won't happen. <laughs> it won't happen. Experts: Uhuru tax breaks to hit ordinary Kenyans hard. The cost of <laughs> bread, milk, cream, cooking gas, fuel, mosquito nets, vaccines, and a host of medical products is expected to shoot up in an ironic twist of a government giving from one hand and taking from the other. Does it know that it has two hands? The amendments <laughs> also include excise duty, fees, and other uh, other charges in computing the taxable value for fuel. So there's a bill that's uh, already been published. It's about to be introduced. Eh? Mm. Uh, it's introducing VAT on uh, LPG. The promise to increase the cost of fuel on LPG negates the reduction of VAT from 16 to 14%. Mm. And at a time the tourism is hurting the most, the government technocrats who drafted this bill and forwarded it to the National Assembly want the industry slapped with an even bigger tax burden. The proposed law wants to tax goods for direct and exclusive use for the construction of tourism facilities, recreational parks of 50 acres or more, convention and conference facilities previously exempted from VAT. They're saying, okay, so you guys... Uh, Stay. Tax. <laughs> tax. Hotels are closed. Mm. 
People don't have their jobs. Are, I mean, they're not able to run their business. People don't have jobs. People are at home. Yep. And there's nothing like we're going to give you 50% of your salary. Because where were we getting the money in the first place to pay you? From hotel occupancy, which now doesn't exist. So we're not going to be able to do that for you. Yeah, it's, it's shutting down. And so, I mean, you can't take from one hand. You can't feed with one hand and then take from the other. It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. Uh, and you look, we give the examples of other countries and we, we talk about the fact that, okay, yes, well, well, maybe we're not there economically. We're not able to do the same thing. But I mean, look at the example we've given of Japan right now. I mean, we talked about just what they're giving the families, but in the same breath, there's a moratorium on loans that they have to pay. Yep. There is, uh, then has, there has been uh, a, a set agreed default, uh, can I put it that, um, in terms of b energy bills that would need to be paid, um, amenities that need to be sorted out. All of that has come to a halt because now we're saying this disease has the potential to ravage us even more than what we would be able to do when it comes to an economic catch-up. So we would rather take the money, pay you, tell you, sit at home. Because we see that if we don't do that, chances of us being destroyed by this virus are much greater than the chance we have to take of paying you with the money that is available. So the ball has been kicked to the doors of parliament. Mm -hmm. Our members of parliament uh, are known to not taking reading well, these things very well. We hope that this time that they're going to do this. Now, especially now that they're at home, they're working from home, all right? They don't need to travel. They don't need to go to services on Sunday. They don't need to go to Karen and then go to meetings. <laughs> they don't need to do any of these things. They can just basically sit. Uh, Kimani Shong was the chairman of the budget committee and his members, including Milio Diambo, uh, uh, Gatondo South MP, Moses Kuria, mm -hmm. and the rest. You can sit down, look at this bill and tell the National Treasury, can come we on. go forward? <laughs> come on. Let's remove here. This we can't. We cannot approve this. However, if it goes into Parliament, especially now that Parliament is going to be sitting and doing uh, remote sessions, mm. hey, that there'll be not enough time to for people to even discuss these things. There was it supposed to be a special sitting, which was which was cancelled because, because of COVID nineteen. Right now, they're going to they're, they're working on modalities of meeting uh, remotely, remotely, <laughs> <laughs> video conferencing and all. Hey. They need to make it happen because some of these things need to move, man. We're not going anything. And through an act of parliament is now then through how uh, these things will be enacted. If it's not done, we're sitting ducks, no? But if they pass this thing the way it is, just basically just uh, just to put it pieces on everything that uh, the government was telling us it's doing mm. to cushion Kenyans. Really? Not this, this way. Is, uh, this, this is not the way not to this go. Way. This is absolutely not the way to go because you're talking about uh, increasing... Turnover tax. <laughs> it's talking about five. Currently, it's at five million shillings of your revenue. Now it's moving it up. <laughs> it's talking about moving that those measures up. So what are we gonna do? What is this that we are doing? I mean, mm. is the government aware of what it's doing? I think they're also at a disadvantage here because this thing has taken them by storm, my friend. Uh, 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 look, uh, 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 <laughs> in the sense that they, never, they have never dealt with something like this before. Oh, it's okay. Because they right. don't. It's in terms of work being done, we it, see very little. It's fine. So now they're being asked all hands on deck. Whereas in very many cases, have there been all hands on deck? Okay. No. Okay. Okay. But if you're prepared for any sort of emergency, uh, they're not. This is one of they're not emergencies. All right. So you can say this is a scale that we had not thought of before. Mm. But at least we had thought of emergencies like, all right, it's going to be flooding around Lake Victoria. We can sort out the people in Lake Victoria. Even we had that, thought Eric. about, you know, food security. In in the event we require to give people food, we have we know the numbers, 14 million. Uh, we can get the... Just the do an audit of the last three disasters in this country. And then you can <laughs> tell me whether there was preparedness in terms of mitigation, in terms mm. of then dealing with the aftermath, mm. in terms of then dealing with future plans. Has there been stellar performance? Uh, I, c I wouldn't say so. Uh -huh, okay. But that's what we call it. Learning lessons. This, could, this is the big... This, huh. You should have learned by now. something historical, this one. should have learned by huge, now. So by huge. now, you should be implementing things that, you know, the lessons we learned from. We are seeing countries in West Africa saying we learned from Ebola and mm. this is what we are doing mm. uh, to stay ahead of the curve. Well, so our colleague um, C.T. Muga has, uh, is feeling unwell, mm. a little bit under the weather, so he stepped out for a bit. We hope that he feels a bit better than he can join us. If he doesn't, then he'll be with us again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, so the pro today's proverb, unless do you remember it, I don't. <laughs> we'll get a little bit of information <laughs> about that and come back with it in a bit. Keep it right here. This is a situation of Miss Kenya's biggest conversation. We'll be having uh, conversations with various government officials this morning and various people who uh, are you know, involved in the fight against COVID-19.
It's now coming up to 7 o'clock. Good morning. Spice around the city. I'm um, telling you that it's going to be like this for some time. There's no traffic really anywhere you look, except for where you know the roadblocks are between counties, where you're not going to be able to come into Nairobi. One vital piece of information, in case you haven't heard in Mombasa, you're not going to be able to use the ferry from today because ferry operations have ceased as from today. It doesn't take place, so you can't uh, cross the channel. Um, in that way uh, another thing that we said should have been looked at but that's what we see right now all the way into the cbd then hopping back into nairobi is very clear from whatever um direction you're coming be it from thicker road westlands mombasa road uh, langata road or gong road looking really good today you won't get stuck where you're going in case you do or there's an incident we should know about please let us know spice of mke on twitter This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching seven. up. Thank you very much for down. tuning to the situation room right here on Spice FM. We're broadcasting to Mombasa 87.9. You are going to be isolated from this evening. Malindi 97.7. You and all the people uh, around Kilifi County will also be isolated this evening. Nyeri 90.9. You cannot come to Nairobi. Eldoret 96.7. You cannot, you're not welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in your county. Nakuru 96.0, 102.5 in Kisimu, and Nairobi 94.4 FM. This is Nairobi and the metropolitan region, actually. So wherever you are in the metropolitan region of Nairobi, you are tuned in to 94.4. We're live streaming the show on Spice FM KE on Facebook and Twitter and uh, YouTube and also www.spicefm.co.ke. So the measures have come into place, into effect. Mm -hmm. We saw people complaining the day before yesterday. Did you see anyone complaining yesterday? They had been locked out, or everybody had. I think everybody had fallen in line at that point and saying, "Okay, well, we're not going to be let in. There's no negotiation that's taking place here." Like you get to the borderline, and then you say, "Oh, you know what? I just forgot something." Or the, <laughs> the panya roots worked. <laughs> they Maybe. did, and we saw the videos of people creeping into Nairobi, and I really wondered where that was exactly and how that happened. But uh, the need to get to where it is that you're going, and we had we heard the sentiments that, "Okay, yeah, you think you're going to stop us? Corona cannot stop us. We need to go do our job." <laughs> This is this, the, is, this the is the sentiment. This is the impunity. Uh, in fact, even the, the editorial in the standard today is, is talking about this. Look, it clearly shows the government is trying to do one thing. The people are thinking this thing is still in America. By the time it comes to Kenya and there are no flights coming to Kenya, it's not coming. Listen. Even if it is here, it will not touch even if us. It come, yeah, even if it's here, yeah, it will not touch us. It will not come to this uh, panya root of mine. Look, the 300, 400, 500 shillings that people would make on a daily basis is more important to them than the fear or gravity of the situation which you and I can see. Look, it does, unfortunately, it doesn't feature. It's like, I see you, Corona, but I'm going to raise you, my children who are waiting for me at home to feed them. I'm going to raise you my rent. I'm going to raise you some extra money for my mother who's waiting. So I see you, but you're going to have to take a seat. That's it. That's the way people are thinking, unfortunately. So what really must but we need okay to do to, think to spread the word? It's okay. Think that way, but then take the other measures. Wear a mask. Keep safe distance. Avoid touching surfaces. And when you do, wash your hands as regularly as possible. Use sanitizer. Wasn't happening, my take, brother. Do, do all those things that you can say, you know, I've taken all the other measures just to ensure that I go to work, I earn a living. When I'm here, when I'm in the market, I'm observing distance. 
karaoke from uh, Afraha Stadium was telling us. The markets around Afraha Stadium, people are just mingling all over. But this the was traders, one of the measures that we were talking about. Okay, okay. Those measures for sanitizing, washing hands, doing all that. Fantastic. Mm, mm. This was another measure. Don't cross into Nairobi. Don't. Because, and there's a reason. Because of, there's a reason. It's not just because we don't want... It's not because Nairobi is so full. Far. It's not because Nairobi is full and we can't take any more people. Yep. It is so that you do not spread or contract the virus. That's what we're talking about. Nairobi then seeing being already has been identified as a hotspot for COVID-19. Majority of the cases coming out of Nairobi. So we're saying, don't come in, not because we don't like you, but because we're trying to contain this thing so that you don't get infected. And then if you do, you're not taking it back to whomever, wherever it is that you've come from. But what did we see? And that was just one video. But that you was know, one but video you know, that somebody was able to capture, Eric. Okay? Yeah. Can you imagine how many people were still there? Uh, forget Let me about tell you, this thing. I'll still find my way into Nairobi. We've talked about this man called Narendra, Narendra Raval, right? Mm. His uh, farm, his factory, the cement factory, Mombasa Cement, mm. not Mombasa Cement, the other cement factory, is beyond small world, going towards Mombasa, going mm -hmm. towards Machakos. Mm -hmm. The people who work there... Portland, yeah. Not Portland, it's beyond that. The people who work there live in Athi River. So you find a roadblock at Small World mm. and you're going to work. You're just crossing over from Athi River, going to work. So what do you do? Just use Panya route. Are you saying that now the people cannot cross over? They shouldn't be. They should not. That's what they're saying. Is it according to the measure that was put in place? So if because if we're, if we're if going to all identify... Of, if, all of us, if all of us who work in that factory live in uh, Kitangela mm -hmm. and at the river, if we all go to work and come back in the evening, how are we taking this thing out of the country? Out of the county? Yeah. Uh -huh. How are we taking it? We, we are the ones who are... <laughs> You're, you're the walking virus, basically, we, what you're but, saying. The but, potential but of But all you. of us are going to be in the same factory anyway. And are then how do back? I know what you do when you go home? If you can still say that, if you can have that attitude, because that's the thing. You don't, when somebody is out of their working environment, you do not know what they are doing in another place, in another situation. So you're saying that people you should not, not go to know, work? No, I'm not if saying people that people in Nairobi should not are going go to work. work. Essentially, what I am saying mm. is that by the time this measure was put in place, there are certain factors that should have been taken into consideration. Because literally, a stone throw away could be in another county, which is what we see, yeah. what you said now, with this cement factory, right? Yes. I can walk, I can cross over. But then we see that the potential of you being able to spread the virus is very high. By but this boundary that. that you, well, I can see the sense that um, if you're in Motomo, for example, in Machakos, mm. you don't need to come to uh, Nairobi, mm -hmm. right? So stay as much as possible, try and stay within Motomo. But around next to maybe what we call no man's land in, in boundaries, mm. uh, around five, uh, no, two kilometers around the boundary, you expect that those people can still cross over. Do you think that the people at the roadblocks, the security agencies, the security forces will take that reasoning and say, all right, then of course you not. guys can cross over. They're or if they go and they realize that these Panya routes, uh, as you say, are being used in this manner, do you think they will not go and set up then another block at the place of these Panya routes and say, it doesn't matter where it is that you say you're going to. There's nothing that's there's nothing that's allowed to pass through mm. because they have the understanding of what we're talking about here. And look, when it comes to lock, when it comes to something like lockdown, all of these things don't come into play. Whether you're working eight hours a day, three hours, five hours a day, what we're trying to do at the end of the day is flatten this curve. You don't know where these people were before. You don't know where they are going. You don't know where they've come from. And that's the thing. Because of the uncertainty of people's movements, then you can be certain in this measure that mm -hmm. we are not going to, we're asking them not to move. Because we're coming from a point of not knowing. That's the fear. Mm. The uncertainty is the thing now that is making them say, put these measures into place. We don't want more to come in. Again, not because we don't like you, we don't feel for a particular situation, but really, we cannot run the risk of having the numbers grow. Look at what... Do you think... On Monday, were we at 172 in the country? Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. No, we were now not. We are. Now we, now now we, we are. are. Yesterday and today, we were 158. Yes, yesterday was 158. Plus 14. Uh -huh. Now we're at 172. Plus, now today... By this time tomorrow morning, we'll we have will have more. It's not a maybe. We'll be at there 200. There will be more cases, okay? So that's, that's what we're dealing with. And these are people who moved three weeks ago. These are people who were in and out three weeks ago where we were at eight. Isn't it? Mm. Three weeks ago, we had eight cases in the country. Yes. Three weeks later, we're at 172. The likelihood of us reaching 300 in the next five days is very high. So those measures that have been put in place, it's not child's play, man. It's serious. But this is what I'm saying. Unfortunately, there are too many people who have not grasped the importance or the seriousness of this thing.
Yes, so they grasp it and, and, and they're looking at it and saying, all right, so I, I, I need to take in the measures. I need to ensure that I obey, I obey all, the, all the rules that have been set by the government. And then what do I do? If I need to go to work, what do I do? I think this is where now questions need to be asked. In, okay, look, it, look, it's a very, it's, a, it's, it's critical in this case mm. that what you're raising, whereby I am literally a meter away. I'm just here. Yeah, in terms I mean, of the boundary, I'm here. I can see my uh, my workplace. I can see the factory where I work. Then you're going to stop me from going to work. Those would be questions that then would be asked, and then the reasoning given, and then maybe people can understand. Not only you can understand. Yes. Instead of saying, okay, so somebody who's coming from um, Emali, mm. come on, you don't need to come to Nairobi, just stay. Right. Just say, or somebody who stays just beyond Athi River and is coming to Shalom Hospital, which is the next, and this is where That's, she's been doing her yes. maternity checks, whatever, for yeah. the last nine months. Okay, mm. she's coming to deliver, and then they say you cannot cross. You cannot cross over into and the hospital, Shalom hospital is there to Shalom. The hospital is there. Yeah. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? This, these are the questions that we're asking. Okay, so in such cases, more FAQs. information needed to have been given. And FAQs. Needed to have been given. When you're planning such kind of things, you work out on the, all the possible scenarios and mm. say, so in the event, this is the kind of question that we are faced with. This is what we shall. This is how we shall deal. Mm. Um, if you can prove to me that if I can look at you and see, well, this is a person who's just walking from their home and they're crossing over. They don't necessarily need to come to the road where right. there's a roadblock because mm. the, the police are at the roadblocks mm. to ensure that we don't have transport uh, crossing over and transport but it's mass movement of people. Mm -hmm. So if you wake up and this is your home and you're just crossing over to go to work on the other side and this is where you earn, your, you eke out your living, it's fine, that will happen. Mm. We cannot stop that. However, the unscrupulous thing that's going to happen is <laughs> people are going to come uh, with matatus from the entire mm -hmm. of uh, Mount Kenya, from Nyeri, from Kirinyaga. They come with matatus, they get to Kennel, they alight from the matatus, they get into the uh, Panya routes, uh, and then they come to uh, Blue Post mm. and they board Matatus to come to Nairobi. Mm. Ah, ooh, ooh. This is the thing. <laughs> well, I just had a moment there because, yeah. <laughs> I'm worried that you thought about it. <laughs> I'm a little bit worried about you, Eric, right now. Because this is uh, what was this happening. Is what what do you happening? think was happening yesterday? This is actually what is People still happening. People who are crossing are not necessarily neighbors who are crossing over because my they've home is come just here. from they're other they're counties. No. It's people who have arrived, so they found a roadblock, they alight from the Matatu, and then they cross over on foot. It's like you're crossing a river that's full. You went and you found, okay, the bridge was swept away, so now there's no more bridge and we are in a Matatu and we need to cross over to the other side. Alight from the Matatu from this side, cross on foot, find a Matatu on the other side, proceed. And that is exactly what is happening in a lot of cases. We even seen the pictures that we've seen in uh, the newspaper this morning. That is just showing that is exactly what was happening. That story that you read mm. on page four of the standard. Uh, there's a photo there. Travelers walking past a police barrier in Kiambu. And they're walking past <laughs> and the police are there. Travelers. Yes, yeah. Gari is Peter. But Mutu. Yeah. Travelers walking past. So they cross over. They mm. find a matatu that has also emptied its people who are crossed over. They just exchange. The matatus exchange passengers. And, so <laughs> and people I, cross. Mm. So in terms of mitigation, this might, this might be a difficult one because folks are going to be able to pass. I'll bring you to the mouth of the border and I'm done. You find <laughs> your way. <laughs> you find so you. people are still crossing over regardless. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Nobody's take look. And I, I, when I say, the majority of people are not taking this thing seriously, mm. unfortunately. Mm. What needs to happen for us to realize how serious this thing is? The government needs to drop the hammer. And this is what we Yoweri heard. Kaguta Museveni in Uganda. So yesterday, after we had a conversation with the uh, next radio in Uganda, mm. Marcus, so somebody called, he, he told me later that somebody called into the show uh, on next radio in, the, in Kampala. Mm. After listening to our conversation, this is somebody who's in the Uganda task force that's advising President Kaguta Museveni on how to fight coronavirus. Mm. And that person, the doctor called Marcus and said, you know what, Kenyans are joking with this thing. Mm -hmm. Kenyans are really joking with this thing. The only way you need to stop this thing is stop all movement. Mm -hmm. Stop all movement as much as possible. That's why we advised our president, remove all matatus, remove all vehicles from the roads that you're ensuring there's no mass movement. If you're told, yes, you can walk, you're never going to walk from Lolongo to go to Westlands. Uh, no. <laughs> and, at the end, and then you're walking back. All, uh, only a very few, a few people will, will do that. Mm -hmm. So majority of the people will stay within Lolongo. Majority of people will stay within Westlands. Mm -hmm. That's what that person was saying. Kenya just needs to drop the hammer. This is the thing. I think we're doing this dance, unfortunately. Rwanda did this. We're doing this dance Uganda with did death. this. Yeah. Uh, they're alive. You know, because the soft 
part of you wants to say, oh my goodness, then what's going to happen to people who, for example, operate the matatu industry? What's going to, have to happen to people who depend on the industry uh, to do their work and all of this? And taking all of these things into consideration, mm. what's going to happen to these folk? But, you know, the bigger question you want to ask, what is going to happen when Kenya has mass infections that she's not going to be able to handle? That's the question you want to We've be asking. We've already been warned by all medical experts. We've Dr. been Mercy told that our health here. system is not going to be able to carry this yep. thing. We already know. Dr. Mercy Mwangangi, the CAS for Health, has already told us this. Mm -hmm. You know, we cannot really handle this thing. Once we get to 100, if we get to 100, and a large percentage of them, let's say even 5%, mm -hmm. require ICU. ICU, we can't. That's it. One case, we can't. That's it. We are in trouble. 16 minutes after 7, Karaoke, you can see you calling in. We'll talk to you shortly. 16 minutes after 7, let's take a look at the weather and then the conversation continues. You can join the conversation 0719 012 That's 0719 012 Are the measures that have been announced by the government so far enough? Is isolating Nairobi uh, enough? Is isolating Mombasa, Kuala and Kilifi enough? And still allowing people uh, within the counties to move around? Especially in Nairobi, where 80% of the cases are in Nairobi. But, well, we are still moving around. Good morning. It's mostly cloudy in Nairobi at 18 degrees. High chance of rain later on. Highs of 26 and lows of 16. In Nakuru, it's clear and sunny skies at 14 degrees Low through weather, the day. Highs of 28 FM. and lows of 14. Nyeri at 14 degrees is going to be partly cloudy this morning. Chance of thunderstorms in the afternoon. Highs of 25 and lows of 16. It's clear skies in Eldoret at 14 degrees. Highs of 26 and lows of 13. Kisumu is partly cloudy at 21 degrees and we'll have a higher 31 and lows of 19. Malindi is partly cloudy at 28 degrees. A thunderstorms expected in the afternoon with highs of 32 and lows of 27. We're going to see some clear skies in Mombasa later on. It's mostly sunny right now at 27 degrees, highs of 32. In Kampala, it's 22 degrees and partly cloudy. That'll be the state of things for most of the day. Highs of 27 and lows of 21. Dar Salaam this morning is mostly cloudy at 27 degrees. Showers expected in the afternoon with highs of 32 and lows of 25. We're going to have fog in Johannesburg for most parts of the morning. Quite low, partly cloudy conditions to continue with highs of 20 and lows of 10. Wrap it up in Lagos where we have thunderstorms throughout the morning and showers will continue well into the night. Highs of 33 and lows of 26. Spice up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. 20 after 7, this is a situation we can make biggest conversation in the room. This morning is done right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. Symptoms of COVID-19. 
which we are grateful for, yep. right? Uh, so it's, uh, it's other, uh, other issues. Let's go to the phone lines. Uh, karaoke in Nakuru. Good morning. Good morning to you guys. How are you? Good morning. Yes, PS is in Mumbai. Thank you very much for that. My, my question is, the question that I'm asking uh, 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 Eric. Yes. Uh, why Why is the, 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 the government is playing games with the Kenyan's life? Why? Why? Don't you see the danger? Come to our market too late, too late to, uh, uh, to ascertain what I'm saying. And if somebody from Uganda can see the danger that is uh, uh, in, in our country, mm. what is the government doing? Why talk tough but you preach nothing? You bring nothing on the ground. Why always talk tough, talking tough? <laughs> are they waiting? I'm asking this question. Mm. Why are they so ignorant? You know, according to the Bible, ignorance is more worse than witchcraft. You know that? Mm. Why are they ignoring the way the Italian did? Or the president is waiting rather than shedding tears. Is he waiting to shed blood? Mm. Is that what he is waiting for? If somebody in Uganda can see the danger in our country and yet he is not in our country, my dear. Mm. Why are these people talking tough and doing nothing on the ground? Kar- what Kar- kind of a leadership is this? I, I understand, I'm Karaoke. A, I'm so bitter. I'm so bitter about this thing. I can hear the bitterness yeah. in your voice, Karaoke. But I want to ask so, you, we're talking about uh, Wakulima Market, for example. We're talking yes. about uh, crowded spaces. What are we saying the government needs to do in this sense? Come and shut everything down? I'm telling you, that's where I work, right? Mm. That's where we were taken. Mm. From here to that place. Yes. And I asked this question yesterday. Nobody is testing anybody. And I told you yesterday, people are, in fact, even playing games. Mm. Even people themselves. Why can't the government come in and enforce the, the, the social distance that is needed? Mm. Point number two. Why is the government saying something they are not even ready to execute in terms of coming together with the county government to get ready of this virus? Mm. Why are just this? They are just talking but doing nothing. My friend Eric. Yep. I know you can hear what I'm saying. I can in hear fact, everything you're saying. I'm even to visit that place, for, uh, especially now. I'm not even there. Hmm. Not that I don't have customers in the morning. You but decided I, I to go home. I fear myself. I even fear hmm. to go there in the morning. People oh, are just so calling since, me and I'm not going. Even yesterday, the, nobody, no authorities came there? Nobody. From nobody the county council, from they the county play government, play. from the national police and administration? Let me tell you something. You know what they do? Hmm. They go around. They come just one, two or three people. Mm-hmm. They go around and they come back, they give a report, something is, uh, 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 nothing is wrong. That's what they do in most cases. Yeah. Yesterday I saw a vehicle of a uh, county government, somebody who did not even come out of that vehicle. He just rode around and then he went, he disappeared. And uh, did not even talk to people there? Nobody. They even come back and tell, give a, 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 a false report in terms of what the president said the other time. Karaoke, can, can I ask you, Karaoke, can I ask you a question? Ask, 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 please. Now, just give, give us an overview. Since you're there, give us an overview. If you could give us like an estimate in terms of numbers, what kind of numbers, of numbers are we looking at in this market? Let me tell you something. Hmm. Before we left here, we were around 3,000. Mm-hmm. Are These we are just s- sellers. Be- before, 3, we left. before we left our original place, you were 3,000 we traders. To a stadium, before we went to a press study, yep. you were 3,000. Mm. And you know, in most cases, you go to a new place, the number increases. Yep. You know that? Yeah. In fact, that place is even bigger than this. But despite that, mm. people are always together, joking that nothing like this can happen to us. It is happening in a European country. That's wow. what people are that's, saying. That's what they're saying. Yeah, that's what they are saying. And sometimes I even stop to ask them, what are you talking about? Mm. Don't you see the danger? Ah, they tell you, ah, when are you not to some boy, a Tuesday? And I told, and give you a good example yeah. of customers, mm. three of mm. them coming to your Kibanda, mm. and uh, they want to buy. They mm. bring their head together. Mm. Are we together? Uh, yeah. do, do, you, do you understand my, my point there? Yes, yeah. they do. They bring their head together. Mm. Now tell mm. me, if one, is a, if one is suffering from the virus, mm. is he not going to affect They're even spreading the other, the yeah. other two the customers? Risk, the risk of spreading even it is you, very, you are very high. Telling to them? Mm. Eh? The I risk is very high. This. I've heard what that gentleman from Uganda said. Mm-hmm. And I think the best way is to lock this country down. down. Or mm. else the president is waiting 
he shed blood rather than rather than tears. That's mm. what he is waiting for. Mm. I'm so bitter, my friend. I, 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 hear, you. I, I hear you, Karuki. Karuki. I hear you, Karuki. Karuki. Thank you very much for speaking to us this morning. Thank you. Simon in Muhoroni, good morning. Yes, good morning, sir. How are you, sir? The, 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 the bitter guy here is very, very realistic. Mm. Mm. I'm following the conversation. Mm. Yep. And uh, the issue about is crossing the borders, yep. especially the isolated the counties. Mm -hmm. This thing is very well communicated by the drivers and the conductors. Such that when I alight from here, yep. Wao wenyewe wanapigana simu. Gari yako imefika. Sasa sisi tukivuka pale tunapata tuga kitu naingia hiyo ingine direct. Ah, so mm. we just cross over on foot. Mm. Yes. Yeah, and then the, on the other side everything is okay. You just know the vehicle that you are going to board while you proceed. Wow. <laughs> and, and nobody's and asking the questions. And the fare is already negotiated. Everything is, is well coordinated. Uh, Number two, back in the village. Yep. Mm. It is very risky, especially among the children. Mm -hmm. I'm a teacher. And you realize sometimes when you find the children playing in the field, mm -hmm. yep. especially football or whatever, and you tell them to go back to their houses and play within their compound, mm -hmm. yep. they tell you they are being sent away from the houses by their mothers because of maybe identifying uh, the house. Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. So where do they go to? Mm -hmm. So it is very the serious and in fact Uganda is very much ahead of us. They are ahead. And we are free that we also follow the same. Thank you very much, Simon. Thank you, sir. Emmanuel in Eldoret, good morning. Hello, uh, morning, Eric. Morning. Good you. morning, Emmanuel. Yeah, uh, morning, do. <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, Nigerian, but Kenyan by choice. There yes. you go. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry to hear about uh, city's sickness. Eh? Yeah. Mm. And I only pray that he gets well. Eh? He He'll will. come back, yes. Yeah, I wanted just to kind of summarize what we are going through, you know, between the government and the citizenry. Mm. It all boils to one thing. You know, why you find like Rwandis are cooperating with the government? And the government? Because there's nothing the government can do if the Mwananchi does not cooperate. Yep. I'm a teacher by profession, and I like to give this kind of uh, example. You know, in my class... If I do not maintain class, uh, if I do not, uh, I mean, the only way to maintain class control is to win the trust of my students. The minute they lose that, even if a user came, you know, in the heart, it's not there. So compared to the government situation, yep. the Mwanainchi lost patriotism. Mm -hmm. Patriotism is not something you can force on anyone, all right? Yeah. Okay? And we lost it long time ago. It's like we have... No reason to be proud of our country. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because if we had patriotism, I I'm telling you, it would be so easy to be so easy to lead these people. You see, but they don't trust the shepherd anymore. This is what happens. Whatever you do comes around. All right. Yeah. And so, because of that lack of patriotism, it will be very hard. That's why it's like we are playing cat and mouse with the government. When I'm here, to not have to enjoy Are you getting what I'm saying? Yesterday, I had one caller saying, we allowed the Chinese to come in. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But there's this airport issue. You remember that? Yes. Yeah. All right? So it's like they allowed these guys to come in, knowing very well what was happening. Now, they're kind of locking us down. So you see, they're kind of hitting back. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. All right? They're hitting back? Yes. What do you mean they're hitting yes. back? Yes. They're kind, of, they're kind of hitting back. It's like you allow these people to bring the virus in now instead of uh, because you should have contained them so yeah. now you're so kind of taking the you're, citizens you're kind are of taking it. hitting back but then yes. on to what end who then would get hurt citizens are getting of course it's, mm. uh, no yes no yes you know at times when you're parenting a child do this <laughs> and you are kind of giving them the right direction they only realize when it's too late is that true or not true true true, yes. true. yes no, that that, 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 that doesn't mean that you should relent. Mm. But, you know, you'll wish that they see what you have in mind immediately than learn later on when it's too late. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, you can imagine in a situation, if you had the confidence of a child, then things run so smoothly. Mm. Now, I would like to draw a, a comparison here. Patriotism mm. needs trust. All right? Yep. And trust mm. is like virginity. You lose it once, it's hard to regain it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much, Emmanuel. Have a good day in Eldoret. Okay, Chin Kisumu. Uh, good, good, good morning, uh, Mr. Eric. Good morning, Mr. Okech. And, 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 and. Good morning. 
Uh, thank you very much. Now, uh, first I had a question. Mm. How, how is it that there is one case in Kiambu? Mm. Just a single infection. Mm. I remember the speech by the by the CS yesterday, mm. and he explained the one in Garissa and said the victim had traveled from Mombasa. Mm. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, how is it that there is a first infection in a given place, excluding that of Garissa? I think there is one in Kiambu. Mm. So how did it come about here? Yeah? Yes, yeah, so I was I was really trying to find sense in that, and it's a little bit troubling me. What do you mean? How, what, yeah. why, why is that troubling you? As in, you're wondering uh, how this person for the case, how this person for the case of the reason, Yeah, how do you contract it as uh, one person in, in in a given place? You would like, have thought there would be more me, than one. No, it should it, it should have been mm. that he got it from somebody around the place, mm. or maybe the they had traveled. The, the, the possibility, in just like in Garissa or Ketch, is that this person yeah, had yeah. maybe come into uh, maybe Nairobi, had gone into Mombasa, or had traveled from abroad, and they went to Kiambu. Oh, we can hope that, but yeah. that was not said. So that was a little bit disturbing, but that's okay. We yeah. can mm. hope yeah. we got it from outside, yeah? And then uh, yesterday, after a very long time of staying at home, I went to Kisumu. Mm -hmm. I went to town, yeah? Mm. And, and actually, there are things you cannot depend on on the citizens to use their sense. Mm -hmm. When you watch at how uh, the CS is giving his speeches, he, yeah. he does more of appealing, yeah? yeah, and trying to ask citizens to see the sense in whatever he's asking. Mm -hmm. But it is quite evident that the Kenyan citizens are not able to do that. Mm -hmm. This thing must go above and beyond appeals. Yeah? It should be draconian. Yeah. It should be draconian in a way. Yeah in some sense, because the vehicle in which I, was, I boarded both ways mm. was overpacked. <laughs> all so of them. I hear, I hear you saying... Town. Why did you not... Why, did, <laughs> why didn't you um, disembark from that, mm. Matatu? When I was going to town, I was, I was taking my sibling for a checkup. Mm -hmm. I waited, for, the, I waited in, for, for quite a long time. The first one, I had to let it go because I thought he's not a serious person. I was, mm. I was wondering what's wrong with the people. Mm -hmm. And the second one came, it was the same thing. Obviously, I would have waited the whole day because seemingly that's the story. Yeah. And it was confirmed when I was coming back. You have to board the vehicle until it is full. So you have, mm -hmm. few, you have few vehicles on the road. Uh, there are quite few. Mm -hmm. And so the passengers are basically just few. caught at that point where you're thinking, <laughs> I don't want to wait much longer. Let me take the go. risk. Yeah. You have to do that. If you don't have your own means of, of transport, you mm. have to wait for it. Mm. So yeah, maybe maybe your catch from yeah. your own experience, yeah. maybe this is a, the yeah. kind of justification that can be given by everybody who's flouting the the advice. Yeah, I couldn't wait. I had yeah. something to do. I had to make this. There's always happen. an excuse for one thing or the other. Yeah, there is always an excuse, and that's why I'm saying, mm. uh, you know, if I was very sensible and my neighbor was very sensible, yeah, we'd we'd, we'd refuse all of us. Mm. Yes, but true. when I'm the only one who's refusing. Now, the, it, it's, it's as though the others are really wondering what's wrong with you. Mm. Yeah? So you're caught people may have an issue. People may have an issue with the woman who's coming with a, with a, a bowl of a man because of the smell, mm. but not with the fact that people are overcrowded. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Get so your that, point. That's a problem I've noticed. Thank you, Okech. Thank you. Let's go to Mombasa. Dr. Shan, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Dr. Ari. Yeah, we need to have a complete lockdown hmm. from yesterday. Hmm. Why? So I'll tell you why. Because even if the richer countries of Europe and America, mm -hmm. they have not been able to cope up with this problem. Hmm. We are not only ill-prepared, we do not have the resources, we do not have the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I would be one of the frontline doctors if things go wrong. Mm. Yep. And And I can assure you that... From my experience of 40 years in this field, if we don't do it now, we mm. are asking for a lot of trouble. trouble. Mm. I don't know what's going on in the minds of the people who are making strategy. But we as frontline doctors, we would really request the president to go for a complete lockdown from yesterday. Mm. Dr. When, when the government says now, for example, you're in Mombasa, this, they've said, let's isolate Mombasa because it's a hotspot. Let's ensure that people are not leaving Mombasa to take it to uh, upcountry and also people are not uh, bringing it to Mombasa or coming to Mombasa to, to contract it. Is that, is that not enough? Is that not good enough? 
Now, what about the people who have already been contracted in Mombasa? Mm. We are already mingling within Mombasa. Yes. Because we're, yes. We're, it's, it's possible, I mean, just looking at the science of it, it's possible that there are quite a number of people who already have been infected, but exactly. have not been tested and are spreading this thing anyway. Not, not only that, there is something called as asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. They do not show the symptoms, but they have it. Mm -hmm. But then if they come near you and you get the symptoms, the person who has given you the disease mm -hmm. is asymptomatic, but you are symptomatic mm -hmm. and you are in more trouble than him. Yeah. yeah. So, so I don't understand. Would you say why, in this why? case, uh, uh, Doctor, you know, look, a, a lot of people are just looking at and playing devil's advocate on the other side as well. A lot of people are saying, look, if there's a lockdown, I'm not going to be able to eat this, the other thing. Are we saying that it is better that we suffer for 21 days, for example, than cry later when we have mass infections and the health system is going to crack because we're not going to be able to deal with this? And we'll still not be able to eat anyway. Yeah, we're not going to, I, I mean, we'll be dead. So I can assure you that we will not, the moment it breaks down in this country, our problems have begun. Yeah. Mm. We will not even have to wait for 21 days or 14 days or 7 days. Yeah. The more we start getting ICU patients. Mm -hmm. yep. I have been working in the ICU for 40 years. Yeah. Mm. And we do not even have the proper hazmat suit, which is which they are using in, mm. in, in, in Europe and in America. Yeah. Right. And yet, and yet so many doctors have contracted it. Mm. So what is going to happen to us here? Mm. Our medical personnel are also going to contract the same uh, virus. Absolutely. Oh Absolutely. Without oh a doubt. Mm. Without a doubt. Dr. Without Shan, doubt. are you getting any information from the government? Like you're in the, in the medical profession. Are doctors are uh, getting any daily updates, for example? Is there a means of communication in which you're being told this is where we are at mm. and this is what we expect you uh, to help us with? You see, what we have done is that we have formed our own groups mm -hmm. and we try to keep in touch with each other, trying to share information as much as possible. Right. And obviously the government comes in once in a while mm. to what we are doing. Yep. But look, having said all those things, Let's accept one fact that we are not ready. We're not ready. We are not ready for this. So the best thing to do is to minimize the damage. Yeah. Mm. While we and can. How do you minimize the damage? The only way, I mean, even America has not been able to fight this virus. Mm. How many people are dying every day in New York? Well, here we are. We saw uh, just yesterday a record 1,018 people dying exactly. in 24 hours. Exactly. And yet, it is the richest country in the world. Mm. Yeah. Now imagine us. We will be rolled over. Mm. It's steamrolled, over, so to speak. Thank you very I much, mean, Dr. Shah. Thanks, Dr. Shah. I Shan. understand that people will have to starve and things like that. But I think that is the job of the government to provide them with the basic to necessities. To take care of them in the interim. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Well, Asante, that's what I want. Asante Sana, Dr. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Shah. 22 minutes to 8 o'clock. This is the situation on Kenya's biggest conversation. Let's take a look at traffic and then the conversation continues. At 8, we'll be talking to Mombasa Governor Ali Hassan Joho. Keep it right here. Seven point nine Spice FM. All right, Jogo Road Mombasa. looking very good today. We had a little problem right around Hamza, but that's opening up a little bit. You should be able to get into the CBD without any issues um, this morning. Coming out of industrial area, we had some holdups right around Likoni Road and then at Enterprise Road as well. That's opening up. I don't know where folks are going, but okay, um, we had that problem, but that's better now. Getting into the CBD will be no problem whatsoever. We've seen some fog situations quite low coming in from the Kitengela area. Um, on Mombasa Road, so avoid that if you can, or in a better way, approach with caution. No traffic to report of so far. The roadblock areas are what are giving people some pressure this morning. Um, if you're not supposed to be there, you're not supposed to be there. So I, th I guess that's an easy way to deal with it instead of swallowing the pressure. Spice of MKE is how you can reach us on Twitter. Give us a call on 0719 600 
spice up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. It's 20 to Spice up yourself. Situation from Kenya's biggest conversation in the room this morning, Eric Latif and Nduoko. Mm -hmm. And City Muga. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. Today's proverb, uh, when you're down, come back up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is uh, the crooked wood that shows the best sculptor. You are the sculptor. I'm telling you, City. Mm -hmm. You are the sculptor. Welcome back, City. Thank you. Um, so we are talking about the country's preparedness. We are still receiving your phone call, 0719-012-600. That's 0719-012-600. Dr. Shan has painted it. And mm -hmm. doctors keep saying this. I mean, Dr. Mercy is here. She keeps talking about this on a daily basis. Says, as professionals in this field, people who are frontline, we are saying, come on, take all the measures that you can now to ensure that you do not get our facilities um, congested. Thinking about this three weeks ago when I thought to myself, my compassionate, my compassionate side came out and I said, you know what? I'm thinking about the, the mother who her children are depending upon her mm. uh, to bring food home every day. I'm thinking about the man who has to push a cart and is depending on that daily. I'm thinking about this. But then I think, as I'm thinking about it now three weeks later, I understand and I say, you know what? We'd rather suffer a little bit now than count deaths you know, unfortunately let me ask, that's what we're looking that at we now speak of, mm. what exactly how we, does it manifest yeah yes, exactly because what they're suffering yeah. people are saying we're going to suffer. Yeah, that's the thing. what is it people don't have food so the, the, the issue th is people need people live hand to mouth that we've yes. i get out of my house on a daily basis mm. i go and uh, get a job and uh, that money is what i'm going to feed my family with at the end of the day mm. yes right? daily mm. we don't talk about is that a hundred percent? Is it guaranteed that when you get out of your no, house today, so exactly you will get it. come back and feed your family it's today? It's not guaranteed. So what happens? And yesterday we had a caller, a friend, um, Steve from, from Kibra. Mm. And he told us, come on, guys. You know, you call, you, we call, you call us hand to mouth. <laughs> we also have learned our way of living with this. Even without, when we don't we get know. something every day, we know what to yes. do. When we can get, we eat. When we don't have, we know also how to survive. We'll still be able to eat. We'll still be able to survive. People, the, one, the 14 million people who are food insecure, it doesn't mean that they're not eating. Hmm. They are eating sparsely. They're not eating three meals a day. They're what it means is that they day. don't have a sustainable source. They just don't have a sustainable of source of, right. of food. Okay. It's the same thing that's happening to the same people that we're talking about. Mm. Now, if we get to a point where we have a thousand cases of COVID-19 spreading around the country, will those people have anywhere to earn a living? They won't anyway. So what's going to happen on that, at that time? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And what will be happening beyond, beyond thinking about the one million people who need to be fed? We're also thinking about the people who are in hospital who need to be taken care of. We're also thinking about the doctors who are contracting this and are therefore getting out of circulation. And we need to replenish and we need to get more doctors and we don't have the numbers. Why are we... So what we're saying is, in, in essence, and what, see, it's, very, it's clear now mm. that it, this is what needs to happen. We're saying we need to curb this thing with the realization that the health system is not going to be able to hold the numbers that are likely to be infected in hospital yep. or in other medical facilities. That one we know. It's not a question of maybe, oh, we're trying to catch up. No, no. It's not going to happen. Number two, another realization is that if we don't curb this, that is the point that we are going to get to, where people are going to want to present themselves in hospital because they're unwell and they're not going to be able to take them in. Very, very sad situation. So we're saying now in this case, something must be done now to stop us from getting to that you point. You know, I asked that question. Mm. All these times when we hear and we read that medical personnel have gone on strike mm. for whatever reasons, mm. one of the things that you'll find even prior to their going on strike Patients who go to hospital do not get the services they want, even with the presence of the doctors. Yeah. Or the health. And the reason is because whatever help they required isn't there. Mm. The medication isn't there. The Diagnostics is, 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 is and not, not there. So, you see, we are not dealing, when you say we're dealing with the situation that we've had before, this situation we're describing has been the status quo for a long time. It has, for that's a long how time. it has been. <laughs> for a long been. time. Even this thing yes. that we're shouting now, headlines everywhere talking about food insecurity. Ah. It's been there for a very long time. We started talking about this we, last year. Uh, last year, we started discussing it. And we talked about the fact that in the last five years, 2019 was the worst. Yes, it was. By so far. it has been there. Food, food insecurity has, sustainability has been a discussion for the last 20 years.
sustainability of food sources <laughs> has been a discuss has, has been a discussion before MDGs became SDGs, mm. right? Yep. It has been there, and for them to have come, that means there was a problem. There was a problem. So it's not something new. We've been discussing these issues. So what we are saying is that in the meantime, whether just like Dr. Shan said, whether it is seven days, whether it's fourteen days. Stop this thing from moving around yep. because we cannot handle Let's a situation what is where people are now. in hospital. Let's it can't happen. Medical pr- Camry themselves have told us we're trying to test. Let people know their status. Let people know really where mm. they are so that we know what to do thereafter. It is possible. Again, Dr. Shan told us now, it's very possible the likelihood that we have people walking around these counties anyway, whether they've been tested or not, that have this because people can be asymptomatic. It is possible that people already have this thing and are spreading it. As a medical practitioner, yeah, so whatever he voices has to be cautionary. Yep. Mm. But if you look at the facts of this particular virus and how it spreads, mm. it's not an if. It's, not, it's, it's a reality. It's, it's a, a reality, reality that yes. people are walking around with this thing and Muta Hikago, the CS, is giving us that reality from one side. But also shucking his responsibility at the same time. <laughs> we will not hesitate to take even bolder measures. Let us brace ourselves for bad news because not all measures we have taken will stop this disease. So why why are you hesitating? We will not hesitate, but you're hesitating. Just do it already. This is what we are saying. You know, <laughs> you're if, hesitating. If, if you look at this situation, if you're telling us that <laughs> what all the measures we have taken will not stop this disease. And you have the power to take me- those measures. Mm-hmm. He does have the power. Story mm-hmm. Ming. If if you consider, for instance, the caution. This isn't cautionary. The hesitant manner in which the government is approaching this matter. Mm. I, what I fear, is when we have a full-blown problem. What on earth are they going to do? Mm. Because right now, with what we have, <coughs> there's all this hesitation. Yeah. Mm. Now, what if it suddenly hits you and it says, "Okay." We are now here. We are here. So we 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 shoot up from two hundred to go to five hundred. You go to a thousand. And yes, then what do? And then fifty require ICU. Fifty. Don't even go for fifty require ICU. What do we do? What do we do? We are basically saying fifty. We are counting when they are dying. Why a lockdown? Interestingly enough, according to World Economic Forum, the UK, US, EU, and many other countries are currently in some degree of lockdown with restaurants and bars, shops, schools, gyms closed and citizens required or at least strongly encouraged to stay home to avoid um, to avoid um, spreading this COVID-19. Why a lockdown? Because what this does essentially is that it stops the virus from moving and that anybody who has already been infected without having gotten any kind of positive results from a test keeps them in a place of isolation and keeps them from spreading this to someone else. It has also come about that because a rapid testing only began in a certain time in some of these countries, namely in the in Europe and in the United States, that it was was clear that there were many cases of people who had the virus but had not quarantined or had not gone into self-isolation and by virtue of the fact that they were interacting with people from social centers to places of work they continued to spread the virus that's why a lockdown is being encouraged movement we already are seeing that all these cases are in nairobi we are at the stage they keep telling us of community transmission just stop the community transmission Let's go to the phone lines. Lydia, good morning. Thank you for the important subject. I, I, we are always told that you get a headache when you get the coronavirus infection. But for many years I've read, whenever you consume too much sugar, get ready for a migraine headache. So many, I think, go for tests unnecessarily. They don't remember that they had too many sodas to drink, too many cakes. So I've learned that many years now, and I don't know what a headache is anymore. Mm. So we should also take care of ourselves in that direction. Mm. That whenever you consume too much sugar, get ready for a migraine headache. And only water can clean it because sugar dries up the brain. And that's where even uh, uh, cancer tumors come in the brain. Sugar is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So we should take care of ourselves in that direction also. 
people thank you, do Michael. thank you thank you thank you lydia people people at this point people are getting a lot of information you know left right and center mm. this is how you take care of yourself this um in terms of nutrition this is what you do uh to <laughs> observe best nutritional hygiene mm. hey hey advice will come left right and center but anything you can do to protect yourself man <laughs> you need to do it <laughs> anything you can exercise exercise you're supposed to have a balanced diet have a balanced diet if you're not uh, you know if you're thinking that this is too much if you've been taking excess of things just reduce reduce oh, it whatever you need to do let's stay healthy as much as possible so we are able our bodies are able to fight this it's 10 minutes to 8 o'clock this is a situation room 0719012600 join the conversation as well on facebook spice fmke twitter at spice fmke 8 o'clock we speak to the governor of Mombasa good morning FM Malindi So we were talking about the measures that the government mature has. intelligent talk every morning uh, measures of uh, containing the four counties Nairobi Kilifi Kwale Mombasa measures of uh, asking and urging people to observe social distancing this is not happening city before you came in karaoke called again and today karaoke was just all out you're saying come on is president uhuru kenyatta waiting to shed blood is he waiting to see blood flowing so that he can just see this thing is serious in nakuru at afara stadium traders are still like he said how many over 3000 uh, over 3000 traders milling 3, about in a, in a social <laughs> distancing space, lie the space he's speaking about mm. isn't very big huh? mm. Mm. so even if you wanted to maintain social distancing between the traders themselves it would be tricky it would be tricky yeah. so if you now throw in the clients who want to come in to buy things it now becomes full blown tricky, tricky. So these are outside the stadium right yes it is outside and they moved from the other market the Okulima market they've yes. all gone there so why not open the stadium but you know what? The, the, I think a, a little bit more worrying <laughs> is the fact that Why he don't said you the as a market? he said that traders tell him that he's heard that traders tell him ah, ah this corona thing people are talking about you're wasting time I beg you. there's nothing like that actually that's I, I, the this is where understanding why people do the things they do comes in you know we may not appreciate this but do you know how conditioned we actually are to many things that we do hmm. Hmm. for instance this waking up doing what it's conditioning. Mm. Children waking up, going to school, cooking. Most of our life is actually routine. Mm. Now, routine is conditioning. It is. Now, once again, when it comes to looking after one's welfare, if one has been involved in a certain trade, in a, way, in a, in a certain business, their mind will be conditioned for that. That's why it's, it's often very difficult when things change. People have difficulties changing. Yeah, mm. adapting to change. Because it's not just they're used to, they're conditioned. Mm. This is what works for them, and this is what they have seen. Now, in this country, the messaging that we've received for the longest time, in consideration what the, the politicians always say, a just a simple interpretation is this. Don't believe a thing these people tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> Boga in Nairobi, good morning. Morning. Good morning. Yeah, now once again, I, I, as I said, I'm an intellectual mm. representing majority of Kenyan citizens, the silent majority. Right. Okay. Yesterday, I broached the subject which is rarely discussed, the language used in state affairs. Mm. So what is happening is the Kenyan population continues to endure and the stomach. You know, addressed by the head of state and my good friend Mutai Kawe mm. in a foreign language at the expense of our national language, Kiswahili. Mm -hmm. You know, in a sense, what is happening is that the, that the head of state is promoting English at the expense of Kiswahili. Last week, I was listening to the leaders of Saudi Arabia and China at the G20 summit. Mm -hmm. They address the world in Arabic and Chinese, respectively. Mm. Duku, can I ask you a question? 
Let me see it before you ask me. What you're telling us, you told us yesterday. That is why I'm asking if I can ask you a question. You told us about Mutai Khan so and the language, and you gave us examples of other people who use their own language to to to, to, to actually put forward me their messages. Mm. Let me finish what I'm saying, and then you ask me. Number two, the president addressed the nation when he called uh, a local TV station, which is only uh, being uh, listened to or watched by a segment of Kenyan society. I don't know what you think of it, uh, Latif, mm. but I think the president should address the nation using a medium uh, of the media, which is understood by majority of Kenyans. But yesterday, yesterday you also championed using vernacular because mm. vernacular is understood. So the, the section that understood that language understood it. Uh, that nothing stops the president from addressing another one, you going to KBC or going to any other station and speaking in Swahili. Does you one get the other? You are talking about vernacular. Kiswahili is a national language. It is not vernacular. Yes. Okay, Bonamboga, let me ask you something. Um, now, if the messages from Mutahi Kagwe and the president came in Swahili, right? Do you think we would have seen a change in the way in which Kenyans are purporting themselves? As an I'm intellectual talking. that is representing the majority of, the silent majority of Kenyans, do you think if he was giving these messages in Swahili, would people stay home? Would people maintain social distancing? Would people understand what COVID-19 is about? If he spoke in Swahili, which is your argument now, would it make a difference? Because if it would, I you think know, this is something that he must do today. You see, what I'm just saying mm. is that uh, this is state policy. And you know, uh, it, it just doesn't make sense for... You see, maybe maybe the president came from an elite background, but once you've given up for yourself for national leadership, then there has to be change in the way you are dealing with the majority of the uh, population. But just answer my question. I think, Boga, in this case, respectfully, I think, yeah. Boga, you are majoring on the minors. Mm. He, the president is using a language that is recognized as a language of, of uh, you know, communication in this country. And in this case, the point um, is that we're talking about the, the, the fight same, against the this The same information virus. can still be percolated down into vernacular, into, into, into Swahili and other languages. Yes. Uh, and I think us focusing on whether the president should speak in English or Kiswahili. We know the president can speak in Kiswahili. The president has spoken in Kiswahili before. And would Mutai it make a difference in the message? speaks in Kiswahili and English in his uh, press briefings. Would it make a difference in the message? Well, the message is what we must not lose uh, focus on right here and right now with this. But, Would it but, make a but, difference in the message? But, but why is it different in Egypt, in Israel, in Ethiopia, in Somalia, in Tanzania, in China and Japan? Because their official languages, if you look at they any of those that. countries, they've decided what the official languages are. If you go to Tanzania, it is Kiswahili. That is their official language. And that is what the majority of public messaging will be but in. Also, if you go to Nigeria, for example, language. where the national language is English, Boga, whatever region you go to, a different language is spoken. It really depends on the decision that has been made I by want to government. Take some, some in Rero. Sam, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Tim. How are you doing? Good morning. Uh, Oh uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed the show, uh, but I've never had a chance to call you guys. Karibu. Yeah, so I just want to contribute to this uh, this issue. Now, uh, some of us are employed. Mm. Uh, we we are in sales, mm -hmm. and generally, what is happening? Yes, we go to work every day, but there's very little that we do. Mm. There's actually very little service that we offer. No mm. customers. You know, shops are closed. If it's lunchtime, there's nowhere to feed. So generally, even as we take these measures of partial lockdown, it, it's really not helping anyone. Business is not is still not working. Yep. Mm -hmm. Most guys are at home. Mm -hmm. So we are not really helping each other. So um, for a total lockdown, we, we get, in, get to our homes for like mm -hmm. 14 days, yeah. get this thing over, then come back to work. Because right now we have to go to work, yes, mm -hmm. but there is nothing we are doing. Good More point, Sam. Like yeah. time. Good point, yeah. Sam. Thank you very much. City Muga, we're coming to the top of the hour. Today's proverb again. Today's proverb, it is a crooked wood that shows the best sculptor. It's a crooked wood that shows the best sculptor. Mm -hmm. uh, well, right, it's uh, self-explanatory. You've already explained it and you'll explain it again uh, throughout will, this show. I will, I will. It's coming up to 8 o'clock. This is a situation on Miss Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Good morning.
Close up your light. All right, looking really good. Um, really, there is no traffic that we see. It's flowing on Langata Road. I think we can count the vehicles that are on Langata Road today. A, lo- a few more vehicles on Mombasa Road. And we see that from Jogo Road into the CBD, looking very good now where we had an issue before. So not much traffic around the city. It's likely to only be quite heavy when we have people running to meet the curfew deadline. But for now, it looks really good, folks. Spice of MKE, you see something that we should know about, let us know so that we can spread the word. But for now, it looks good wherever it is that you're going. Please be safe. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man... In the room, we have C.T. Muga Nduoko, Eric Latif. And now joining us on the line is the governor of Mombasa County, His Excellency Ali Hassan Joho. Good morning, governor. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much for joining us in this room this, this morning. Thank you for calling, sir. Now, uh, we know there's a lot that uh, is happening in Mombasa. Today is the day that Mombasa goes into isolation. Yes. You've been advocating for a total lockdown. Yes. Are you taking these as small measures, incremental? Are you taking this and saying, okay, let's, good enough, let's move on? Hmm. Yes, we are taking the measures put in place positively. I think it, it may be a good beginning. Hmm. And obviously, the battle on COVID-19, we have to progressively evaluate the situation and be able to take more measures. Hmm. So this is one, and we're looking forward to further evaluating and seeing uh, what else we can do to ensure we we put measures that are effective, really. Yesterday we had callers uh, calling and, and, and wondering how they were going to uh, get affected by this. Mm-hmm. Some of the people who work in Mombasa, but they live in Kilifi and Kwale. Mm-hmm. And they're wondering, so what's the fate of us? What's the fate of our jobs and, and, and the rest? This is the point, uh, my brother. Mm. People must understand that it's it's not it's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough. There's going to be a lot of sacrifice that ev- each one of us have to undertake. And these are the things that we'll have to go through. Stay at home when we don't want to. Not necessarily be able to report to work. And that is why the government at the national level and the county level is having a conversation on how we'll be able to cushion these uh, people that have had to go through this economically so that we have, the only way we'll succeed to, to, with this battle or, uh, the, against the pandemic yep. is to stay at home, to avoid uh, spreading it by going around easily mm-hmm. because that's the only way you can spread it. If we continue to go around like we normally do, then that means we are spreading it. So it may be tough, it may be difficult, but really this situation has to be to be managed in that manner. Governor Joho, do you see that uh, it, it is necessary then to suffer a little bit? And when we talk about suffering, those individuals who say, well, I need to go out and make a little something every day to eat, is it necessary to suffer in the interim to then get the result at the end of the day whereby we can then catch up? This is the time to suffer a little bit. This is the time to sacrifice. Mm. This is the time to stand up for one another. This is the time to be on the lookout to help those that need help. And that is my call. I have been telling people, you be on your brother's keeper today. You look after your neighbor if you have to. Mm. Yeah. Because all of us, all of us have to suffer. Mm. And if we took that decision that let's sacrifice um, a month 
you know, suffer for just probably 14, uh, 21 days or, or there about a month, the narrative will change. You know, we will turn this around because right now, whether we like it or not, yeah. the graph is on upward trend. Mm. We need to tilt it and bring it down. Mm. And it just won't happen. It just won't happen on its own. It, requ it requires a bit of sacrifice from all of us. Mm -hmm. There appears yeah. to be a lot of naysayers in your county, Governor. Very many people who call on this show say, well, this COVID-19 story, just forget about it. We need to live our lives. We saw the um, results that were shown in a poll that was conducted the other day that Mombasa County had one of the lowest numbers of people who are saying we support a call for lockdown. Let me tell you, people slowly are understanding how grave these issues are. We don't want to be in a situation. The fact is that we don't have the human resource capacity, the medical equipment, and the preparedness like other cities have had. Mm. You look at Italy, for example. It has, it has one of the best health systems in the world. Mm. And today they're crying. They're losing 700, 800 lives a day. Mm. You know, they're at a point where they're even saying they don't know what to do. So yeah. we must be able to say we have learned from the mistakes that were done elsewhere and mm. we do things differently. And for me, as a leader, this is not time for populist statement. This is the time to really stand up and say, you know what, this has to be done. Mm. So we understand, that, like for example, in Mombasa, we've been mapping out the families that we know are vulnerable. Yep. And as a government, we're trying to put up measures collectively, corporate uh, players and every national government, mm -hmm. matter mm -hmm. agencies, to try and cushion them. Now we're having conversations with institutions, you know, employers, tell them, you know what, we need each other at this point. Mm -hmm. So for me, obviously we'll have to suffer a little bit, but if we took that decision, but let us suffer for, for like two, three weeks or so, then thereafter, the narrative will change. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You've talked about mapping out the vulnerable families. How many do you have so far in your records? What we have mapped is 227,404 families. Mm -hmm. But we continue to verify the numbers. We continue to have our people on the ground. Um, to this is a very huge number. Uh, 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 so how many people in total? Because these are 227,000 so families. Average, Average average of five people per household, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. So over a million that's what people. We're looking at. Yeah, that's what we're looking at. So our efforts is to be able to provide the basics, you know, water, basic medication, food, for just about a month. Mm -hmm. Just about a month, and let's see how it's going to go forward. Right. So, yeah, so you're absolutely right to say that we need to suffer a little bit. For example... In Mombasa, we, we, we have seen the trend. Mm. We looked, well, we tested roughly about 240 people. Mm -hmm. 203, we got the results, of which 17 were positive. Mm -hmm. We've already lost three uh, uh, fatality cases. Yeah, three people have died. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you were to calculate that, 17, 3, that means almost 18%. Mm. Yep. So number of um, cases that we have tested are not, for me, are not convinced. It's not a sample where we should be able to say we're on the right track. Right. Mm. We need to start saying we have tested 20,000 people or 1,000 people per day. That should be able to enable us to say, we have the actual figures and facts on the ground because we don't know the situation. For example, the four cases that we're picking from Kenya Post Authority, mm -hmm. these are local transmission. These are people who live in the community. Right. We've had a mother who passed on, who passed it on to the child, or the mm -hmm. child passed it on to the mother. We're not so sure. Yeah. You know, we have someone who, who unfortunately passed on, who passed it to the wife, and then the, the entire community around there are now in isolation. Mm -hmm. Some were contact tracing. So the numbers are big, mm. and we can only determine when we get to do mass testing. Now, um, um, Governor Johor, just understanding that 
this measure of mass testing that is now being recommended is coming from the premise that we don't know. So a lot of um, suggestions have come about for lockdown because of the fact that we don't know. It's better than to keep people in one place so that we stop it from spreading. Would you advocate for the same? That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, initially I started saying that before we do anything, we should consider lockdown because of the capacity. Mm -hmm. I understand it was not easy to get PPEs. Yeah. It was not easy even to, like, for example, in Mombasa, we, we now installed um, the Roche test uh, CPR machine. Mm. And we have got another one donated to us by Washington University. Mm. But we have been struggling to get reagents. Now is when we're getting probably about two, three thousand. Mm. We had wanted to be in a position where we stand at the ferry and test almost everybody that crossed the channel. Mm. But to we don't have that capacity yet to do that you know we don't have that capacity yet mm. so even if we were to mm. execute our plan uh, which were which is on track mm. in mombasa we want we have capacity to test to test probably about 700 a day mm? Mm. even that 700 in my opinion is not enough it's still not enough still not enough so if we were to do it with cambry probably maybe we can push it to a thousand two thousand a day mm. we have countries or cities that are doing 10,000 cities a day. A day. Mm. You know? Yeah. And it, you see, only when you test your people, you'll be able to be informed the actual position on the ground. But but situation as it were, really we're just not so sure. Mm. The numbers that we've tested are not sufficient to be able to tell us we're doing well or not. Mm -hmm. So for, for me, it really lockdown should have been the situation, even though I understand when people... Say, say there are serious economic issues, people need to be consulted. Uh, besides food, you know, people are paying mortgages and what have you. That is why I'm saying every institution, government, and... All, all uh, should work together. We need at this point to work together. Mm. The only way we'll be able to succeed is when we work together. And every one of us sacrifice up to some level to say, this is my contribution yeah. towards the fight against this pandemic otherwise we'll will not really have a, a positive story to tell mm. excellency yes sir naomba nikulize swali kwa kiswahili ili wenzetu ambao wako Mombasa labda waelewe zaidi ah sikuizi wajua kizungu kweli wa Mombasa lakini niulize nice one <laughs> basi nitakuliza kwa kiingereza basi <laughs> Aina neno Kiswahili pia ni sawa watu watu waelewe wengine ambao waelewi. Ah Sante, uh, within the uh, next two weeks I believe the holy month of Ramadan will begin. Yes. Now, nilikuwa nataka kuuliza ni mipango gani serikali yako uh -huh. iko nayo kuhakikisha kwamba wenzetu ambao watakuwa uh, wanatimiza masharti ya mwezi huu wame tuseme masuala yao yameangaliwa ndugu yangu mimi nimesema unajua sisi yes. hapa Mombasa mm. mm, waislamu wengi they've always every year every ramadan had a program mm. of feeding people mm -hmm. i know of a family for example that feeds 22000 families during ramadan mm. my humble appeal to everybody that today is about humanity Today is not necessarily about a faith or specific faith. Yep. We want to make sure, Ramadan or not Ramadan, that every family in Mombasa, literally every family in Mombasa, wana msaada. Mm. Mm. Wana msaada. So, tunataka tuyangalie broadly kwamba kila jamii, muislamu, si muislamu, uh, Hindu, whatever it is, ambaya na itaji msaada, apate. Mm. Bila kuko. Na tutambua sisi Ramadhani itafika na Ramadhani tuta ensure ile program bao tunafanyia kila mtu pia muislamu wa party during Ramadhan. Mm. Yeah. So I am uh, kind of grateful to those families ambayo kawaida wanapeana chakula Ramadhan. Mm. Who wamekubaliana tuungane mkono tupeane chakula sasa kwa kila mtu muislamu sio muislamu 
ambaye sasile wa ili watu wote wasilale nje hmm. governor you've started a program to mobilize these resources you know you've you've already been able to raise some money uh, i uh, how much have you raised so far is it close to 20 million by no 20 million we are we are county 001 my friend people we have a lot of philanthropists right. what were generous mm. people are committed to helping each other which i'm really grateful about uh by what is today is wednesday yes yeah. by monday we had almost reached we're almost reaching 100 million shilling okay that's good that's very good what so target do you have uh, our target is uh, food worth 700 million mm -hmm. this is our plan okay the county government is contributing 200 worth mil million of food yeah obviously we are asking national government to step in right we are hoping maybe we can get 3 400 whatever it is mm. okay and then the shortfall mm. or the deficit is where now the private sector is coming in would come in yeah the question though governor is that how were you able to do this i mean we're not just seeing we're seeing the 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 bonds where you i mean food is already being um put aside in the event that you know it is needed which is it's is coming right we've seen other things at the ferry the sanitation uh, port that you're, you're you're putting up there and making sure that people are sanitized at all we saw the the taps that are being put in place we've seen this and obviously it's not just a, a fly off the seat of your pants action it's something that was planned how are you able to do this let me tell you first first thing that you do as a leader is to bring everybody on the table bring everybody on board form a united front from across the spectrum mm -hmm. if it is business leaders political leaders corporate leaders religious uh, civil society mm. the clergy the, the religious leaders you i the hell, I, what i did first is to bring everybody onto the table mm -hmm. Mm -hmm say that we are in this situation the only thing that will save us is to stand together mm -hmm. yeah. so and my county commissioner which we co-chair the committee is also very efficient and effective mm -hmm. so it is it was easier to say that watu wamekubaliana we will come together we we'll leave our affiliations outside there mapenzi yetu chuki zetu nje tufanye tu sasa kwa umoja yep. ili kuweza kutumikia watu mm -hmm. and that for me is the success story mm -hmm. because immediately for example when we wanted to do the water station at the port at uh, the ferry immediately we had a solution because we, we had someone with a tank who had mobilized it mm -hmm. and then someone with the the, the drilling machine and by Ms. Mandio here mm -hmm. the rig the water rig so we were able to do an efficient uh, uh, borehole system within 24 hours so we did two effective and efficient su uh, supply of water within 24 hours point mm -hmm. mm. so without covid these things can happen even if covid was not no, there uh, the county we could be running efficiently we were, properly isn't it we were, we were having a conversation yesterday mm. na tunasema mungu analeta kitu na na mtihani yeah. lakini pia sometimes iko na baraka zake mm -hmm. yeah. There are lessons that we have learned. Absolutely. There are lessons that we have learned as leaders as business people you know and maybe going forward kutoka hapa tutajifunza kwamba umoja wetu utafanya mabadiliko makubwa. Kwa mfano mimi nakwambia sasa hii Mombasa the good gesture you have people walking in mtu anakuja na mahindi nusu kilo anasema this is my contribution. Wow. You know somebody even bringing water, he, somebody buys a, a carton of mineral water said he, this is my contribution so people are committed and there's a lot of goodwill ni sisi tu sometimes kama viongozi nafikiri tunajisahau na siasa we we indeed can pull this country together we can mm. look at the situation today you know tunaongea lugha moja tunaelewana i have brought my opponents on the table wale watu walinipinga kwa jadi nikamwambia this is now your time mm. to contribute towards a, a good cause and everybody is responding well mm. really so the positive response watu wamejitolea ni sisi tu kama viongozi kujipanga kwa mfano unajua sisi we are working on building capacity mm -hmm. we are saying i told the private hospitals in mombasa we must build and a fully equipped 
hospital outside our normal operations only to deal with COVID-19. So mm-hmm. ni a sisi to sacrifice kama county. Na nyinyi private hospitals mutoe contribution on equipment and human resource. So mm-hmm. we do it collectively. Mm-hmm. Right. So to support a patient to a COVID hospital. This is how other cities succeeded. Ukipeleka, for example, we're looking at Technical University of Mombasa, turning it into a 500-bed hospital. Mm-hmm. Alafu, tunataka to create some 50 ICU care beds and facilities at the cost general. Mm-hmm. So, tukikupeleka pale when you need intensive care is when now we move you to cost general. Yeah. So meaning we have to coordinate with private sector hospitals, mm-hmm. CC ambulances, you know, ICU ambulances, so that we try and truly isolate COVID patients in one hospital so that we can look after them. And, and, we, can them. and we can deal with them in one place. Mm. You know, there are cases in Mombasa where 18 nurses had to go into isolation or, or self-quarantine yeah. because of dealing with one patient. So if we're not careful, we'll end up having a big number of our medical staff self-quarantining or in isolation. Right. Because, because, you because you cannot do that. Now, let me ask, the, the, the idea that you've uh, raised, and it sounds like a very good idea, turning Technical University of uh, Mombasa into uh, one huge facility, 500 bed capacity, what else would be required? How many doctors would you need for that? How many nurses? How many medical workers? Uh, how many, uh, w- what else do you need to, to get that moving? You see, what first of all, the good thing is that we're asking uh, the hospitals, CC Onyewe, we're asking uh, the, the private hospitals, maybe if we closed a few of our wings, mm. uh, move, move the equipment, because I see, for example, like Mombasa Hospital has had a wing COVID-19. Yeah. Aga Khan, they've had a wing. Co- we, all, we have a wing COVID-19. We all move it there first to start with. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then the, the human resource, Wale, Nawal, Nawetu, Nanani, we move them. To that point mm-hmm. number one and then we shall be able to evaluate what do we need but we are roughly looking at an average of 20 percent for example um ventilator support yes yeah. we need to pipe the oxygen mm-hmm. which we were ready because we ha- we already have the stock in a in the co general hospital mm-hmm. the basic medication that we've nom- we produced we have recently invested 140 124 million mm-hmm in equipment, new equipment that has arrived. And by the way, we combine that is a kibinafsi. It's a kuwa tosha. We have advertised for 100 uh, new staff mm. for health. We are evaluating. If we need more, like I said yesterday, as a county, we are ready to shelve a lot of our projects. Lakini mm. uwezi kufa, kukosa nas, kukosa daktari, kukosa matibabu at this point. Yeah. So if we are to say to ongeze number of madaktari kwa miatatu, we shall do it. Mm. You'll be able to do that. We've even uh, we've even created a database. Ata wale madaktari ambao wali retire, tumejua wako wapi sasa. Mm-hmm. Na tumeongea nao, tumesema the day we need you, we'll give you a call. So they're on standby? They're all on standby. Okay. They're all on standby. A great deal of the economy of Mombasa was very dependent on what I may refer to as the maritime commerce uh, activities yeah. at the port, CFSs, and so forth. Now, this has diminished. How is this going to affect the efforts that you are putting in place? You know, we, we, are, we are coming up with, a, with, a, with specific plans on uh, stimulating our economy. So we have a, an economic stimulus plan going forward. We would even started looking at creating uh, or diversifying uh, the Asharaza Mombasa. Mm. Uh, you know, we have broadly the conversation on the blue economy. Lakini sahi tunasema, tukishamaliza COVID-19. As we discuss COVID-19 and how we can we can battle it out, we're, we're having our economic experts sitting down to draft mm. a plan that will get us to revamp our economy immediately thereafter. Mm. So even as a county, tunasema sisi tutatafta pesa pia tupatia watu za biashara. Mm-hmm. We're bringing uh, financial institutions together. We're creating land for opportunities. We're now investing mambo ya uvuvi na kadhalika na kufungua special economic zone. You know, mm-hmm. wacha ile national government ya county. 
were saying to national government gazette this one because this one will happen immediately yeah. so what like we're talking about one, which has not Dongo Kundu will take some time but mm. we have learned in Meritini that we want to do it today mm. right. so to Kimaliza to covid-19 we embark on creating our special creating our special economic zone mm. kupatia SMEs pesa za kujirudisha pale walikosea kupata biashara tena na kuanzisha maisha so we have a, an economic stimulus plan that we have we are looking at the incentives even at our level tutapunguzia watu mzigo vipi wa, wa kodi za kiserikali mm, will negotiate for them codes za maisha so that what for the next six, three, six months wajipange warudi back on track mm. yeah governor we heard you um watch you actually in an interview the other day and you were talking about the measures that are going to go into effect today one of them is uh, so that you isolate the uh, the the county was the stopping mm-hmm. of the ferry services at Likoni what's the, what's the position let me tell this? you you see we went to the ferry and we looked at the situation mm-hmm. we, and we understand that on avuka kila siku and that's why we said we could not we could not uh, abruptly stop the ferry operations but mm-hmm. what we needed to do is to try and create a safe environment for them and we started by you know lenda nikasema focus for now because you know the ferry crosses sometimes 30,000 people in an hour yeah yani he ferry the numbers are unprecedented you can't see these numbers elsewhere mm. so we tried i mean we prepared as, as we, we could be at that moment what was simame hivi what when the hivi now every day we are looking at how best we can solve the ferry but eventually eventually ferry tabidi tu tujipange kwa sababu we we have we have three kilometers mm-hmm of uh, people queuing every day mm. three kilometers of a queue waiting to, waiting to access waiting to cross over on the ferry that's the whole point this morning i got oh a call from goodness. someone who says mimi niko hapa na gari kuanzia saa moja na mbona ningoje saa tano nikamwambia unfortunately utangoja paka saa tano kwa sababu saa hii inahitaji tu kila mtu ajitolee yeah ili mwananchi evuke na unajua sasa we are getting people to start to stand on the ferry one meter distance yeah but now we are not managing that on the queues mm. we are not now we have pro- we have done those, those disinfectants at the ferry we are producing 1.2 million masks mhm we want to distribute in mombasa mm-hmm. you know face masks that we mm-hmm. we are together we we bought some equipment in the county we are with the epz we told them we need to now this is your moment to help they're producing them okay so kwanzia leo ama kesho will be giving them out for free and everybody must then wear it. must wear the, the mask okay absolutely wezi ingia mahali hata when we're ready even government institutions everywhere you enter you must be wearing a mask mm and we're going to give it to you for free so that you don't give us an excuse <laughs> that we didn't know to talk about your good excellence so that it, so that it doesn't go and said hongera mm. kwako this is a, a a stelling effort that you have made and it is life changing and uh, even more so when you consider that uh, for the longest time a great deal of the economy of mombasa was very much dependent on the tourism uh, business mm. Uh, what you are doing will clearly indicate that you are determined in this fight and actually you are determined in this fight nilikuwa nataka tu nikueleze kwamba hongera kwako nashukuru bana mimi naomba tutusaidiane hata nyinyi bana you know you guys your voices zinasikika pahali pakubwa yeah please let us let us let us continue working together to ensure we succeed in this one mm. and then everything else itarudi kuwa tu sawa mm. because today today is about life really It is about life and just I, I know we're probably coming around to the end of this but um governor it, one specific thing that um those m- mothers for maternal health care for example with a curfew already in place and somebody might have an emergency at night what is in place in Mombasa for those emergency services that may be required because it's a question that has come up quite a number of people are looking for those answers that's one of i got a call yesterday from some leader somewhere who would ask me the same question this is the point mm. first of all that's like amongst the essential 
services and movement that is allowed under CASCI, that is one. Two, we are now redirecting all our ambulances to 24 use and we're stationing them mm. in the sub counties okay. mm-hmm. so that everybody that needs service, and we have county colored uh, inspector vehicles in all the sub counties. Mm. We are telling our people, when you need help, go to that vehicle. Mm-hmm. It will help you. It will take you to a point where you need to go. Okay, okay. Right. So, was as you were to shida, but when you see a county vehicle, it's now on the ground for that purpose. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so you basically that's redirected that's all the county happened. vehicles to, this, to these My operations. My county vehicles are direct. They are aware that mm. if they see a sick patient... You will be the one transporting them okay. to the facility. They know it. Okay. Yes. Ali Hassan Joho, Governor of Mombasa County, we thank you very much for speaking to us this morning. Asante San and very, very many of your constituents are listening to you this morning. Just one final but word. Speak to them directly. I just want to plead with them that COVID 19 is a reality. To see Fanya Makosa, Kufkiria Kwamba Sisi Hezi Toshika. Inaweza kushika kila mtu. The only thing that we need to do to be able to succeed ni kujilinda, kujichunga, na kupunguza matembezi yetu, not to move unnecessarily, mm. please stay at home, kama huna kitu cha kufanya, hakuna stories za kutoka kwenda kubangaiza, take care of yourself, mm. take care of your family, mm. na kama huyapendi, yafanyie wale ambayo unawapenda. Ama yafanyia wale ambao wanakupenda. If you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for the people you love. Absolutely. Or at least also do it for the people that love that you. Love you. <laughs> that love you, absolutely. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. Any enforcement measures that you have in place to ensure that people are observing this because, well, there are those that will flout and you they just the need to be reminded. Is, one point is we, 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 had, we have really advocated against police brutality. We have said no no cases in Mombasa and I'm grateful after the ferry, sub, ferry incident mm. we've never had another issue but the point is we're telling our people abide by the regulation just understand that this is for you and that is the message we want to send that we will not get to a point where we have to use force to get you to go back home mm. we want to get to a point where everybody understands that they need to be at home so we will continue passing on the message. We depend on you as well to pass on the message. Yep. This really has been done for the good of all of us. Before we let you go, so Governor. We don't get to a point where we have to see... Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, don't, we really don't want that. <laughs> we, don't, and we don't want to see that, really. Before we let you go, Governor, we all always have a proverb of the day. And today's proverb, I think, will speak directly to you. Siti Muga, uh, w- tell him. Uh, it is the crooked wood that shows the best sculptor. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the crooked wood that shows the best sculpture. Wonderful. Yes. In this particular uh-huh. case, what we are facing is a crooked wood. Uh-huh. And uh, the one that is able to work with this crooked wood <laughs> it's gonna come up and actually this. produce a very good sculpture will be the best sculptor. Absolutely, in agreement. I'm in agreement. And and in this particular case, Governor, I think you're you're already demonstrating that you're heading towards being one of those that will emerge. No, shukuru, no, kizangu, Congratulations no, and all the best. All the best with all the work that you're doing. Please remember to stay safe. Huh? Yes, for sure. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Governor. Thank you very much, Governor. Stay blessed. Stay blessed always. Thank you. Asante. You 24 minutes to 9 o'clock. This is a situation from Kenya's biggest conversation. Let's take a look at weather and traffic. Clear skies this morning at 19 degrees in Nairobi, likely to become partly cloudy conditions later with highs of 26 and lows of 18. Taking a look then into Nakuru where it's sunny and clear skies all through at 18 degrees. Partly cloudy conditions will follow later with highs of 28 and lows of 14. In Nyeri, it's mostly sunny this morning at 18 degrees. Chance of showers in the afternoon, however, highs of 25 and lows of 16. Eldoret this morning is mostly sunny at 17 degrees and these conditions will carry through the day with highs 
degrees of 26. Taking a look into Kisumu, where it's partly cloudy at 23 degrees, highs of 31 and lows of 19. Malindi is rainy this morning at 28 degrees. Partly cloudy conditions will follow and the rain will come back in the afternoon then with highs of 33 and lows of 27. Taking a peek into Mombasa, it's mostly sunny this morning at 28 degrees. We'll have highs of 32 and lows of 26. Then taking a look into East Africa and in Kampala at uh, 23 degrees, it's partly cloudy, likely to be this way most of the day with highs of 27 and lows of 21. Dar es Salaam this morning is partly cloudy at 28 degrees, a chance of showers in the afternoon and highs of 32 and lows of 25. Johannesburg at 11 degrees is foggy this morning, will be that way through most of the day, highs of 21 and lows of 11. And finally in Lagos at 28 degrees, it's thunderstorms through the day, highs of 33 and lows of 26. Still the same situation on the roads today where it's clear Traffic. You look and um we see in Nairobi on Mombasa Road, not so bad getting into the city. Actually, very, very good. There's no traffic. Let's just call it as it, as it is. And moving around different parts of the city will be very, very easy for you today. There will be heightened traffic this evening, however. And that means that people are running home to get away from the curfew hour. But for now, everything looks good. Um, it's moving swiftly around Juja Road as well. Getting where you need to go. Several parts of the city are reporting the same. Anything that we need to know about changes that you see let us know on spice of mke on twitter spice up your life mature intelligent talk every morning spice up yourself Done right. All right. So 94.4 Spice FM. Nairo. The people of Mombasa, they are on the line. Anthony, good morning. Anthony. Okay, hello. Hi, mm -hmm. Anthony. How are you? I'm very fine. Cool in Mombasa. Very good. Yeah. Also, say hello to your fellow Mombasa resident, Ochola. Now, Ochola has dropped. Uh, Anthony, so you are cool in Mombasa. You have heard the governor speaking. What's, what's, yes. your, what's your reaction to that? I must admit, uh, I've been one of his toughest critics. Mm -hmm. I've been uh, criticizing his uh, politics and uh, the way he handles things. But on this one, he has totally redeemed himself. Mm. He has proved he has what it takes. Mm. I give him congratulations. Mm -hmm. and tell him his initiatives are good. And we are happy with what he is. The only one thing I would like to make to remind him to try and see that it works out well so that doesn't spoil his legacy. Yep. It's a distribution of the food he has. Let him make sure it reaches everyone. Because what we see on the ground is different from what the governor is saying. We know he has the stock. We know he has the goodwill. We know he really wants to do it. But let not the men on the ground 
spoil what good he has done. Anthony, he talks about the fact, I mean, we heard him say this over and over in the half an hour that we spoke to him. And he said, you know, what he also banks on is the coming together of the people of Mombasa and the people of Kenya generally. He'd say, yes, we've done one, two, three things, but without um, Kenyans putting their hands together, this thing is not going to work. Uh, so do you exactly. find, do you find that the people of Mombasa um, will then embrace this new attitude and say, all right, look, we need to work together. There are certain things that are being done on our behalf. But there are things that we can do, social distancing, for example, washing our hands, staying away, um, avoiding social gatherings because they've asked us to do this. Are people willing to toe this line? We really want to toe the line. Mm. Majority of us want to do it. But just like I said the other day, there are those few elements mm. who are not doing it and they're worrying us. Mm. If you look at Kithoni, for example, it is one of the, the areas that I'm densely populated. Yeah. If there's an outbreak there, it's a big issue. Mm. And then when we see Matatus and Tuktuks doing business as usual, when they get to those roots inside there and nothing is being done, mm. we are very much worried. Mm. Mm. You even start fearing your next neighbor because you never know what will happen yeah. or what he'll bring home. True. We are worried. So we want to see the governor taking steps on that. So want to see him stepping up. He says and he's avoiding policing. He says he's avoiding policing, but you're saying you'd like him to actually take those measures. He should because if anything goes on, when the outbreak comes in Mombasa, it is him who will have the headache of handling it. Okay. So he should take measures, even if it means policing. He should, as a governor, he should because he has to protect us. Asante sana. Ochola also in Mombasa. Good morning. Oh, good morning, sir. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Salama Kabisa. Thank you for joining the Situation Room. Yes, thank you very much. You've heard your governor. What do you think? Okay, I've heard my governor, but uh, I don't want to comment about the governor's side. Yep. I just want to say something uh, on my, my, own, my, my own contribution. Mm. Uh, my, my take on this problem that we're having in, in the whole world is one. Mm. Sir, I'm an ex-seminarian. Ex-seminarian. Okay. Ex-seminarian. Mm -hmm. Meaning you're a former father? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, I've seen a revelation. Mm -hmm. It's a small one, but uh, I want to say it, but... Uh, Maybe I'm a, I'm a small person. Maybe people might not take me seriously. Mm. But I've seen something. Mm -hmm. What have you seen? Whatever we are going through is a punishment from God. What have we done? God, God is really annoyed with us as human beings. Mm. And I've only seen one thing that we've committed the whole world. Including you people who are on the studio. Mm. I want to ask you a very simple question. No, I usually hear the way you people start your programs in the morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, please, maybe from tomorrow, you can have a change. I've not heard you people talk starting your programs with the word of God. Mm -hmm. just, just to say a simple prayer. Mm. Just say a simple prayer. God is annoyed with the human being because of one sin, hypocrisy. Mr. Tola, Mr. Tola, just a question as you, as you continue. You yeah. are aware, of course, that this is a secular radio station, not a religious one. Okay, fine. Mm. Okay, maybe I, I don't know more about that, but... So you're Prayers saying, is, Ochola, you're saying, you're saying that um, it, from from where you sit, this is because man has strayed from the the ways of the Lord. Yes. What is it that we need and to that, do to fight COVID nineteen? That is why, and that is why, my friend, God has locked all the churches. Mm -hmm. God has locked mosque. Mm -hmm. But do you know what? The devil worshippers are praying. They're doing, just, they're doing the activities. 
So what we need to do, <laughs> what we need to do is very simple. Right. Mm. It's a very simple thing. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let the Pope and the head of the Muslims mm -hmm. and all all these other congregations. Mm -hmm. Throw in the Archbishop of Canterbury while you're at it. I mean, just oh, for good gone. measure. I think he's going to call back. He, he was going to give us now the, the route to fight COVID-19. His view, by the way, is not a lone range of view. There it is, is not. No, there are very many, yeah, very many people who share, this. Who yeah. share that perspective of yeah. his completely. It mm. is not, yes. And they have, and it's just that maybe they have, their voices haven't been heard loud enough. Mm. But from the very beginning, they were telling us that we are being punished. Mm. It's one of the, it's the plagues all over again. Yes. Yes. I don't want to rubbish anything that he has said. I have no evidence no, to the contrary. No. So I mean, I can't really say, I come on, Ochoala, what are you telling us? I, I don't know. I don't know. But I believe that anybody who believes, you believe, I believe, it, 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 reflect. But well, at the same I, time, let's do what we need to do to fight COVID-19. Precisely. Th that reflect. ought to be the focus. Yep. Mm. Let's reflect as well. David is calling in from Nakuru. Good morning, David. Good morning, Eric. How are you? I'm fine. Good morning, Fiti. Good morning, Fiti. Good morning, sir. How are you today? I, I apologize. Uh, my, 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 my mind traveled a little bit. I am well, thank you, and thank you for the greetings. They are well received. Good morning, Ndu. Good morning. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, our common enemy mm. is Corona by COVID-19. Yes. Yes. No, no, that, that gentleman who called, who, who said, who, the, that intellectual who said you're speaking for the majority silence. Mm. No, I want to support him, Eric. Mm -hmm. I want to support him. This is, okay. Eric, you see, you see what, Eric? Mm -hmm. You know, if you, want, if you want to fight this disease, this COVID-19, yep. in terms of languages, we must, we, we, we must, our governors must use the, the, where they come from, they must use the, like, uh, the mother tongue. Mm. The, okay, like, like in Mombasa, you see jo, how Joe is very fluent in Kiswahili. Yeah. Mm. The Eng English should should come third. Mm. No, you are a pan Africanist. You mm. see, mm. we should not. You know, we should not, as a country, be captive to European languages. And if you find we are so hostile to African languages. Mm. For, for example, Wele Soinka, Professor Wele Soinka came to Nairobi, sometimes back, and he said, and he told people, you get two people talking, talking, and one says. I speak Italian, French, English, German, Spanish, and other says, "Wow." Then the, the then the other one says, "I too know many languages, mm. Gikuyu, Yoruba, and so on." <laughs> and the other says, "Why? Why?" So the point, David, Africa? you're making is let's let's use let's use as many languages as possible to communicate this. Yes. Bottom then, line. You see, Africa, Africa's really I've, I've got to take other calls, other callers, David, David. Thank you very much. Vivian in Mombasa, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good We're morning. Fine. Thank good you, morning. Vivian. Great. Um, I must commend Joe, Joe mm. Hope, mm -hmm. being one of his critics. Mm. For this time, he's actually redeemed himself. But I just like to inform him mm. today, as we are doing the round, Congo where mm. no one is wearing masks. At the market. No, I mean, yes, at the market, at the roadside. You know those wale mateja? Yes. The ones who help vote in the masafi? Yes. There are a, a whole load of 100 people. None of them is least bothered. So, the mahali, after Kama is saying this room does not work, so the mahali is a baby. It's a baby. Thank you. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you. Mangi in Mombasa, good morning. Morning, guys. How are you? Hey, Fine, good morning, thanks. Mangi. First and foremost, you are doing an excellent job. I always follow in the morning. That is my breakfast. Thank you, sir. Uh, going back to the discussion, I have had the co telephone conversation you had with the governor. Mm. Yep. It's wonderful what he's doing, but one thing people have to understand is that we cannot start everything that he wants at the same time. Mm -hmm. People are complaining of Congo are not having masks. People are doing this. People, we cannot... If the governor has started an initiative of showing us how important this is, how the directive 
from the government end up helping us and revive our economy. Then we should join hands. We shouldn't always hold our hands to look at what the government is doing, what the government is, doing, is not doing. We all have, in every county, we have only one governor against the majority. Yep. So the governor is the leader. A leader alone cannot make the, they cannot make a county. We should come together, share ideas with the governor, mm-hmm. be on the front line to follow the directives, and then if there's anything we ask, then we should say, now we are in the home. Can you provide us the food? Good, good. Now we are, sanita- now we are sanitizing. Oh, we are ready to sanitize our hands. Mm-hmm. Can you bring us the sanitizer? Now we are ready to put on the mask. Can you bring us the mask? Or oh, make the masks. Or can you, can, you, can, you, can, you, can you come up with an idea of making local masks? Yeah. I've seen guys having local masks in, uh, even in Italy. I always follow channels in Italy, in yeah. German and French yeah. and France. Mm-hmm. People are making local masks. It's not a mask. It's not a mask that the governor should bring the mask to you. Good point, Mangi. So, Thank so you very much. So the point is the people should take uh, responsibility as well. People should come together and say, yes, let's do it together. Thank let's you. do it together. And this thing will go out of this country. Thank you. Esther in Kilifi in Mombasa. Esther, are you in Kilifi in Mombasa? In Mombasa. <laughs> All right. So Mombasa, Esther in Mombasa. Good morning. good morning to you. Yes. My governor has spoken very well. Mm-hmm. He has actually spoken like very, a thousand wise men. Now, <laughs> of course, yeah. he's a wise man. You remember, I, I talked about it yesterday. I yes. had him on, on, on TV the other day. Mm. He has given us a roadmap of what he can within his own limitations or within his own jurisdiction. He has said exactly my county one, two, three, four, five. So, as people, can we just stop maneno? Every Kenyan, by the way, enter to social media, kila mtu anajua kila kitu. So, for once, let's just listen. Take what we are being told to do. Unaona, we are being even told to wash hands. Right mm-hmm. now, the washing hands, it may sink. Mm-hmm. Everyone is washing hands. Whoever it is, they are washing hands. So the governor is saying, he has a communication channel. Mm-hmm. He has a way of, uh, he has ideas that needs to be implemented. Can they just be taken to the next level immediately? You know, like uh, Siti Muga and, and you guys do are saying, this thing is not waiting for anybody. Mm-hmm. Let's move with speed. Yani, your speed, you nataka to kuona. Your speed. If you are being told, Feel like this one meter away. Stay one meter away. You know, we are wajuaji. So can we just stop wajuaji mwingi? Do what we are supposed to do. We abide. Fall in line. Do what you are supposed to do. Yeah. He Thank says, you, Esther. Be a bit, it will be a bit comfort, but for a while. Yeah. So that's it. Period. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, Bye. Esther. Bye. <laughs> Cyrus in Kilifi. Good morning. Morning, uh, uh, Eric. Good Kari, morning. Welcome morning, to the Cyrus. Situation Room. Thank you. You've heard okay. the governor of Mombasa speaking. Uh, we haven't heard uh, what the governor of uh, Kilifi is doing. Maybe you can enlighten us. Yeah, no. Uh, as from my from my point, mm. I see I see nothing going on. So I'm wondering, is he alive or I don't know? What? Oh, what don't you see? When going you say on? nothing, what do you mean exactly? Yeah. Uh, what I'm trying to say is this, yeah. Mm. Like uh, when you go like uh, like on the roadside, you can't even see uh, people yeah. having masks or, or you. Ah, we loved him. Cyrus Callback, we'd love to hear what exactly you talk about. Bernard in Nairobi, good morning. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good Fine, thank you. you. Uh, first, I'd like to commend uh, you for the good job that you're doing. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Um, you need to understand that you have a big, big uh, following and a lot of people are listening to what you're saying and we really appreciate that. We appreciate as well. Yeah, secondly, um, I would like also to congratulate uh, the governor of Mombasa, uh, Mr. Joho, for the job he's doing. I think he's the first governor to have come out and uh, explained to us in simple uh, terms what he is actually doing, which is, uh, for me, very important because the mass needs to hear what communication uh, he has and what they are doing as local governments and as uh, national governments. I think he's doing a great job also. Mm-hmm. Uh, my point is, though, uh, I would like to differ with him a little on the issue of uh, the, 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 what, we, what we are calling the total lockdown. Uh, and, and I think Kenyans really need to get to grasp and realize that uh, when we talk about a total lockdown, uh, things would be very different. It's, a, it's as good as a martial law. Mm. 
Yeah, and uh, we we have to be clear about that. I know sometimes we we say I've had people on the on on the platform here okay, say over and over Bernard, again. What are the disadvantages of a total lockdown? <coughs> the disadvantages would be that uh, one, uh, it will favor very few people in uh, in our society. The mass would actually be. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to even put it because we have about 80% of our population in Kenya, which is the reality, mm. who live basically hand to mouth. We, we can't ignore that fact. We keep saying, oh, maybe you can do this, you can do that. But the truth of the matter is, yes, we could have a lockdown, but we must have very, very precise and uh, exact measures before we have this lockdown because these guys will suffer people will die we'll have more people dying but i thought this is what the government is trying to put in place the government is trying to do that in place which is good and that's why i commend him but you see when we say we have a national what are the rest doing i mean mombasa is just uh what 10 percent of the entire nation what are the rest of the people doing what is the national government doing nobody from the national government has come to tell us in uh, explicit terms like the governor did what they would be doing or what they are doing well we have we have we have we have heard from the the fund that was established by the president the other day led by jen karuku of uh, kbl that's true but uh, what has but what is the fund doing have they have they have they come out tell us what they're going to be doing yes they have because I haven't heard it, I don't know. Maybe I need to look a little bit keenly, but <laughs> I haven't, I haven't seen anywhere where they are saying this is what you're going to do for the people in Kibera. This, because you see, uh, Governor Joe actually has gone down to specifics, mm -hmm. and that is what mm -hmm. people want to hear. Yeah. When you yeah. give, when you tell us about policies, or oh, uh, twenty percent of these will be reduced. You know, those are statistics, and we don't know how are those statistics being turned into reality. Mm -hmm. That's what people want to hear. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Bernard. Thank you. Have a good day. It. A lockdown would affect a huge majority of the population. It must. <laughs> it must. Because mm. what you're trying to do is to avoid that huge population being infected. Yep. So or dying. Course, yes, so it will definitely infect. You see, one of the things that uh, we seem not to... A spread of the virus will infect a huge majority. It will. Yes. It will. <laughs> it will. And, and if it's a huge majority, it may also kill very many people, very who, many people. whom it need not have killed. Mm. Yes. So some of these steps, much as they may appear to be draconian, they are clearly necessary. They're, they're important. Mukoya they're is calling in from Thika. Let's speak Mukoya and then we go to the top of the hour. Mukoya, good morning. Ah, good morning to Shikamo. Marhaba. Marhaba. Shukran. Mine is to a few, just a, second, uh, a few seconds. We are able to conquer this pandemic united. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everyone is to take a step forward in adhering to the rules regulations and abide by laws put up mm. that's the only medicine the mombasa i want to congratulate the mombasa governor uh, of what he has been doing because bringing people from all walks of life uh, to a conversation that we develop the, the the county government and the country at large is a very best measure lastly namba kwauliza kwa kiswahili tafadhali endelea Hapo mbona hapajakuwa na muungano wa madaktari wa jadi na wa sasa ili kuboresha tiba na kinga ya maradhi mbalimbali? Shukran. Asante. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, the, 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 his his question is not difficult to respond to mm. in that the medical doctors have an association is not even one. They have several associations to which they answer to. And even the various disciplines among the medical people have their own uh, gathering. Yes. Okay. So if you're talking about them being organized as, as, as groups, they are already organized. If we're talking about them participating in this conversation, I believe through the Kenya Medical Association, they've been participating very, very vigorously in these conversations, mm. talking to the Ministry of Health and, and, and uh, giving their views and offering their assistance. It's something that they've been doing. But, you know, there's... There are two groups of people who seem not to have been mentioned here. One is interesting in the sense that is the sort of mention that people don't want, mm. morticians. Uh, if people consider the levels of deaths that we're likely to have, will we have sufficient service to cater for all these people? Do you actually even, even have space? Yes, even There's if space. you want to keep them for just one day. And then there is the assistance that is given by what you call, is asked about the national government. Mm. You have commissioners, county commissioners. Mm. Okay. Now, these people actually work. You may not hear of them, you may not know of them. The local administration. Precisely. Coming to the top of the hour city, remind us, today's proverb. Today's proverb is, it is a crooked wood that shows the best sculptor.
It is the crooked wood that shows the best sculptor. Yes. It's coming up to nine o'clock. Remember, in this hour, we are going to be talking to Dr. Marcy Kareer, KTN's medical journalist. And we'll also be crossing over to South Africa and talk to a Kenyan who's in South Africa and hear what the conditions are there and what's happening in that country. This is a Situation Room. It's Kenya's biggest conversation, live streaming and also broadcasting online and on land. Good morning, nine o'clock. up your life all right uh, we've gotten, gotten out of traffic but since we never got in we're not getting out in this case not much traffic on the roads today it's looking pretty good from whichever direction you want to see Ink, uh, i don't think anything is going to happen at this point we have most of the vehicles um away from the roads right now we'll take a look at it later but it looks pretty good from where i'm sitting spice of mke any accidents or incidents that you see let us know and we'll spread the word This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, nine. not this down. Is a situation. This Kenya's is the situation room. We're the only way to start to, your... Uh, Professor Ken Otombe. Otombe. Ken Otombe, he's in uh, Joburg, South Africa. We spoke to him last week. Um, now he, we want to hear an update of that and also looking at uh, how the Southern African countries are dealing with COVID-19. Then also we'll speak to Dr. Marcy Kareer. So if you've got any questions for Dr. Marcy Kareer, 0719-012600, ask Dr. Marcy. Spice of MKE on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter, as well as Instagram. All our handles, Spice FM, K-E. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that look. So remember what we were talking about earlier, the people who are in quarantine uh, facilities. This time, after spending 14 days, they've, they've had it up to here, hmm. so to speak. They're right? done. They are, they're done. Uh, especially when the government comes and tells them, we are going to extend your quarantine and because... Then you're you're, and you're going to pay. And you're going to pay <laughs> because you went to party. Mm. Eh? And someone is thinking, I have not even left this place, surely. When did I go to party? Um, we saw a lot of activity happening yesterday um, in the uh, facilities. Mm. Those who were at uh, the Lenana Quarantine Center were all moved from the Lenana Quarantine Center, Lenana School. They were taken to... Uh, KMTC, KMTC Karen. Mm -hmm. And in KMTC Karen, now each one of them has a room. So At Lenana, remember, they were in a dormitory. So it could have happened uh, before. Y yes. Mm. Also, uh, those who are in uh, Pride in Lantana were also complaining yesterday and saying, look, you are telling us, so far we've been paying 6,000 shillings a day to be here. Now we've been told to stay another 14 days at 6,000 shillings. At our cost. At our cost. Absolutely no way. We're not having any of this. The government should pay this. I thought about this and I thought, you know, these conditions that people are complaining about, it would have been that these conditions or the appearance of them would not have been made public. But this is a danger now because you realize that others who hear about the stories of the horrors, as it were, of yep, quarantine, yep. if they do present with any symptoms, let me tell you for free. They're not going to bring them forward because they don't want to be remanded, as it were, to these conditions. They don't want this whole idea that uh, perhaps things would go wrong or that if I stayed in my house and contained myself in one room, per, for example, it would be better for me. And we hear that. If that is what the quarantine facilities that the government is providing seem to be, then I'm going to stay. If I have symptoms, I'm going to stay with them at home and make sure that I can do anything that I can to make sure that I'm okay. 
real sentiments being told by Kenyans now saying, I don't want to be involved in that mess. Number one, I don't have money to go and pay. Number two, those are the conditions after paying. I'm not interested. I'm going to stay home. That's one of the dangers now that comes about from things like this. It is. And uh, let's just balance it with mm. the positive thing. Yes, there was a problem. The government has moved to try and resolve it. It may not have been in the time space that we would have preferred, but it has been done. Now, what this tells you is that there is a great deal that the government can do. A lot more than they're actually doing. Mm. And they need to step up their game and do the things that they need to do. These piecemeal efforts that they keep making and waiting to be pushed before they actually make a decision doesn't help. Hmm. It erodes social capital completely. You find yourself in a situation where something could have been spoken of and done. Now you've entered a debating society. Mm. Mm -hmm. And there's a back and forth, which was unnecessary in the first place. You open it up for all this. Yes. And this and is why I... I, 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 I there are some positives. Yes, this is a positive, but it's not a positive for me. Mm. We are reaching a point where people are the ones who are complaining and saying, this is a bad situation for us to be in, for you to take action. Why didn't you take that action in the, in the first place? What did it need to, to what, what needed to happen to ensure that Lenana School is a proper quarantine facility that's well managed? It's not about staying, people staying in one room. Those people are less than the number of students that we have in Lenana. My friend, Each of them could have been. There uh, are 1,600 students in Lenana. There you go. Mm -hmm. And they have water. How many So, so how many two people or two, Hey, put it this way. I think there are 11 houses. So 11 houses. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you could have the 32 people. Each in of one them. house. <laughs> Each, of, yeah, yes. Each of them in their own house. Mm -hmm. Or even two, two, in of a, them two per house. house. Mm -hmm. Even three per house. Surely. And remember, each house has three dorms. There you go. I can't. But now they were placed um, in one. We've moved them to take them to current. This... I, you know, th there are positives, the yes, but I'm refusing you, to accept You're telling the us that there's water for 1,600 students, and then there are 32 of them, and there's no water. Mm. Uh, that arithmetic doesn't really make sense, does it? No. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Look, at the end of the day, it just means that somebody didn't bother to do their job, and people don't care enough. And, you know, we talk about the attitude of Kenyans and uh, saying that, okay, look, something needs to be done. Attitude of people to say, all right, even understanding that this COVID is a thing, wash your hands, maintain social distance. Even those who are tasked with the responsibility of making sure that those in quarantine are taken care of probably don't even see the seriousness of this thing. Mm. That's why we see the situations that we're seeing. So it's across board. The person who is walking on the road, the person who is in the market, the person who is in an educational institution, the person who is dumb enough to have a party, the person who is in, t the, even the person who is taking care of um, certain projects. Across board. This thing is not. As far as we see COVID affecting everybody, in fact, even the inaction by some people affects everybody. From the person who doesn't wash their hands mm. to the person who doesn't see fit that a quarantine facility needs to have certain things done. It's across board. Like, and it's really? ridiculous. It, Come on. Absolutely. I mean, let's actually, now that we speak of, of this, let's cross over to uh, Karen, <laughs> KMTC Karen, and speak to one of the people who were transferred from uh, Lenana School last night. Mm. And let's call her Anne. This is not her real name. Anne, good morning. Good morning, Chuchu. Good morning. Thank you very much for speaking to us this morning. This is Eric Latif. We have uh, CT Muga and Nduoko. Okay. We understand that you've been in quarantine at the Lenana School for the past, uh, what, 14 plus 2? Is it 16 days? Uh, yeah, today is our 16 day, actually. Hmm. And w why were you moved from Lenana last night? Um... The situation there was not um, conducive, mm. especially as an isolation center. Mm -hmm. And we raised our concerns. And I believe that's why we were moved to here, which is actually more favorable for us. Uh, paint paint for, us, for, for us the picture, the, the differences between KMTC and Lenana School. Well, honestly, um, we didn't have a problem with Lenana as a school. Mm. We only had a problem with... Um, the whole isolation bit because we were sharing um, communal areas like bathrooms, yet we are supposed to keep distances. It was impossible to do that, honestly. Yeah. Mm. But here we were moved um, to current, host, uh, current KMTC. We have our own rooms. At least we have plenty of showers. Each one of us can have their own um, shower at least. Yeah. Right. So I think it's favorable for us now. What made the movie? Was it, uh, was it that they looked at you and they felt sorry finally? Well, we actually raised our concerns. We've been raising them um, since we came because um, we told them we don't feel that 
this is a conducive place for us to stay in. Mm. But each and every time we didn't really get help until we did our video. Mm -hmm. So I believe that's the reason why they took action. What about the other amenities? The washing, uh, disinfectant, uh, sanitizers, yeah, access actually, to water? We, we, yeah, yeah. Um, we had problems with our PPE. We, we said, I mean, it's, I think it's actually running across all the quarantine areas. Mm -hmm. We were not having enough masks, mm -hmm. enough sanitizers. We are not having, we were not being provided with enough um, mm -hmm. PPE for us to be safe. Yeah. So I think moving forward, maybe there's going to be a change because now they say they'll be giving us every single day. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping for the best. Mm. Now let's talk about cost. Sorry? Let's talk about cost. Have you been told whether you are going to be paying for the next 14 days? And how much? Well, no. Yesterday we were told that um, we will not be paying. You won't for be the paying? Existence. Yes, we will not be paying. Mm -hmm. And I had the CS also talk about it yesterday that we are not going to be paying. So that's where we stand as of now. Mm. Okay. And for the days that you spent at uh, Lenara School, were you then required to pay for that or has all of that been um, erased as yes. well? There was a controversy about it because when our, our group, the Lenara group, we were the last one to leave the airport on Tuesday. And whoever that, that arranged um, the whole accommodation at Lenana told us that since you guys say you don't have money, so we have opened up um, Lenana as a center, so uh, you can go there since you say you don't have money to pay for the other government facilities. So we went to Lenana knowing we are not going to get to pay any shilling. That was the very last group that left on mm. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But apparently the, 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 um, the principal and everybody else had a different um, information. They were told that we were supposed to pay. Mm. But for up to now, we haven't paid anything because that's, that is what we told them. Because okay. that is the information we got. Mm. And when did you get your first test done? We were tested on Sunday. Mm -hmm. That was on the, um, which day was it? Um, which day was it? On Sunday. Mm -hmm. That was one week after we came. We came on Tuesday. Right. And we were tested on the Sunday, which was on the, is it on the 5th? Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. It was on the um, 29th. This, this past yeah. Sunday. Yeah, the first time. We came on 24th. We were tested on 29th Sunday. Okay. And did yeah. you, when did you receive your results? We received our results on that day. Okay. And that so day that day. the results was, were given to you individually? Every person got their results? Well, that's the thing, actually. We didn't do that. They just came and um, just told the one who was um, sick. Mm -hmm. They called her aside. They told her, this is the result, blah, blah, blah. So apparently we were told that if you didn't, you were not called on the side that you have to know that you are negative. Mm -hmm. That's what we did. And we asked for our our um, request form, like there should be a request form saying that you're negative or you're positive, but they say that the protocol and blah, 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 we are not supposed to get it or something like that. So we didn't get anything. And who was telling you this? Um, we had like our, our interviews mm -hmm. who, who are in contact with us every single day. Okay. So are you getting regular communication from the Ministry of Health or, or any of those officials? Are you hearing anything? Has that changed? I mean, I understand that it's been a day since you've been moved. But if we look at how it has been previously, um, are you getting any regular updates in terms of what is going on from their end? Um, to be honest, um, the previous two weeks, we haven't really been getting like regular communication um, in respect of, of all our concerns. Mm. We would like raise our issues to our interests. We would um, not really get proper um, responses. But I don't know, maybe things will change because we have moved to a new place, so I don't know. Mm. And we wish you all the best and thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you so much. We wish you all the Thank best. You, Anne. And we'll we'll Thank we'll keep so checking in with you and, and to hear how you're you're coping. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Right. Santa Sana. Well, um you're not supposed to get a result. <laughs> Really, um, things. Yet the protocol says and it has been published by the <laughs> Ministry of Health that the person who everybody gets their results. What you are hearing We are also hearing the MPs who got tested 
Mutula Kilonzo Jr. has gone on to, to, on to Twitter and said he has received his results, which indicated that it's negative. So why is it that some people can receive and others cannot, Again, are not supposed to? Eric, remember what, you, what we're discussing here is not the process of testing. Mm. It's the mindset of those who are in that ministry and the godlike complexes that they've acquired over time. Yep. Where they seem to think that a government directive is there, yes, but then they will also now decide what they think they will yeah. do. Yeah. They, they, they will decide. This works for me. Uh, you're not supposed to get it. Yes. Surely. It's a quarter past nine. This is a situation room. Let's take a look at the weather. Good morning. All right, Nairobi is mostly cloudy at 20 degrees, highs of 26 and lows of 16 today. Looking into Nakuru, it's mostly sunny at 19 degrees, highs of 28 and lows of 14. Nyeri at 19 degrees and showers expected in the afternoon, highs of 25 and lows of 16. Eldorado is at 18 degrees right now, highs of 26 and lows of 13. Kisumu at 24 degrees and partly cloudy, highs of 31 and lows of 19. Malindi is at 28 degrees, highs of 33 with showers expected in the afternoon, lows of 27. Mombasa, 29 degrees, is mostly sunny, highs of 32 and lows of 26. Kampala is partly cloudy at 24 degrees, showers expected in the afternoon, with highs of 27 and lows of 22. Dar es Salaam at 29 degrees is partly cloudy and showers expected in the afternoon, highs of 31 and lows of 25. Johannesburg is cloudy today at 13 degrees and highs of 21 with lows of 11 with foggy conditions in the afternoon. Lagos at 27 degrees will have light thunderstorms and rain for most parts of the day. Highs of 33 and lows of 27. Spice up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. The situation on Ms. Kenyon's biggest conversation. Let's cross over to South Africa now. And we are joined by a Kenyan in South Africa. Morning is done right. Morning. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. Kennedy. Good morning. Hi, hi. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning to everyone in the studio. Good morning. Welcome to the Situation Room, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again for hosting me. So we spoke to you last week and you were telling us that um, the lockdown had gone into effect. Yes. Uh, in the course of the week, we've seen also some cases rising in South Africa, but the lockdown is still in effect. But also we've seen a couple of videos that we're not sure whether they are real or not, whether they're current or not of uh, some people looking agitated and milling out into the streets, demanding to be fed and even, you know, uh, raiding some supermarkets. Um, look, uh, the lockdown is a bit tough. Mm. Um, some of those videos 
um, are not really a true reflection of what's happening in, in South Africa. Mm. I think some of those are from archives, but there was also um, a few incidents where there's some, you know, breaking into some stores. And, yeah, you know, it is what it is, but that's the price of a lockdown, you know. Mm. Yeah. So how has it been in terms of, um, has the lockdown started having its effect? Are you seeing like uh, you've peaked your numbers in South Africa? Are they starting to dip? Okay, so in theory, ideally you should expect to see a dip. Um, Looking at the numbers that the minister is reporting at the moment relative to what had been reported before, that's prior to the lockdown. Um, The numbers are slightly lower than what we had before because you know previously the numbers were in the region of 100 100 plus Mm -hmm. but then you see now we're looking at 50 60 you know uh, i think at one point it was 80 but it's in the region of 50 60. now from what they presented yesterday i think they are looking to model the daily data that is um, being collected or you know being received of cases now and then from that model, they look at what is happening now in terms of the numbers and then looking at what would have happened um, had the lockdown not been in place. So then you're able to see whether there's a benefit. And so uh, the president did make an announcement that um, they will let people know just before the end of the lockdown on whether this has worked or not. And so most of us are actually quite curious to know what... Um, you know, has been found and what the decision would be going forward. Are we still going to be on a lockdown? Are, are they going to extend it? Yeah, we don't know. Um, since the lockdown has been affected, did you see an upsurge or decrease in the number of infections? Look, it does look like there's a drop. Hmm. It does look like there's a drop, you know, in terms of the numbers. But again, remember, they're now moving into community testing. So this is massive testing in the communities and because of that in theory you should be able to see more numbers because you're reaching out to more people because remember initially the numbers we were seeing were numbers that uh, involved samples that were going to laboratories uh, the big laboratories and they were doing the more uh, costly pcr tests Mm. but then you see now there is um, rapid tests you know like your quick hiv test Mm -hmm. but you know you test and within minutes you have your result so we do expect that the numbers might be high, but um, so far it's not as what you know the government expected. Because if you look at the numbers relative to what was reported before, um, I think there's a bit of a gain. Mm. What we've also read in the papers is that uh, given the high prevalence of HIV that South Africa has had, and given the structures that they have also had to combat this particular disease, that this structure, the structures that existed, are now very useful in com- combating COVID-19. How true is this? Um, that is true. That is true because, um, you know, it's not only HIV, it's HIV and TB. You know, South Africa has done well and spends quite a lot of money on their health budget. Mm-hmm. So they've got all these systems in place. And if you look at most of the big donors uh, that put in money through HIV and TB programs, these are channeled through the government infrastructure. So it's been a bit easy to work through those systems because, you know, they've got a lot of outreach programs. And this is what they're using to get to the communities. And so that is actually working to their advantage. But then just uh, to go back to your question specifically on the uh, HIV-infected people, Mm. at the moment it's very unclear what the correlation would be between COVID and HIV-infected people. In theory, of course, they would expect that if your, uh, if your immune system is compromised, then the likelihood of you succumbing um, to COVID or getting um, easily infected by COVID would be higher. But, you know, we are yet to see anything showing that. And at the moment, people are busy out working. There's many trials running. And hopefully we'll get some information and some insights in terms of um, what that means, you know, in terms of the intersection between corona and HIV and TB. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
during the lockdown, it would be interesting to under, to hear a lot of, you know, reasons has, have been given in other countries. I mean, here, for example, where, you know, um, lockdown is not encouraged because how are you going to take care of people who depend on um, a daily wage, for example? Were any of those measures brought into place in South Africa to, to take care of people no, who, who depend on a daily wage? That's been that's been really difficult. Um, so to be honest, uh, that measure hasn't really been been taken into consideration. But so there's people who survive on social grants. Mm. So the government has allowed them to go out and receive their money because remember the lockdown was announced just before the end of the month. Mm. Mm. So that was about the pay pay time for their grants. So you know those were allowed to go out and 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 collect money. And you know initially they had insisted that. Literally, all businesses close, even the small dukas in the townships and in the estate. Mm -hmm. But I think reality has started eating, and uh, you know these dukas are becoming quite important in the food chain. Yeah. So some rules have been relaxed. Um, I think in the last two days, and so the the dukas have been reopened, and people can go and buy uh, food. Mm -hmm. uh, the mamambogas in the streets have also been allowed in some selected areas to sell food because uh, there's been a massive disruption um, of the food chain. Mm -hmm. So I think what they are doing is they're assessing what they initially announced right. and then weighing that against what is happening on the ground. And, you know, just to avoid people going hungry and all this riot, mm. then they're beginning to allow some of these small businesses to come up and continue running so that at least they reduce that tension. Yeah. Professor, there seems, uh, the, the whole world seems to have had a problem with test kits. Mm. Either they are not readily available or there are questions about their efficacy. How, and South Africa is now involved in mass testing. How this circumvented this problem that seems to uh, be right around the globe? So they have test kits. They got uh, a rapid kit. So remember initially, a lot of the test was lab-based, the PCR testing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you put some put the and, and you know that's first and foremost quite expensive. Mm -hmm. Like what is currently happening in Kenya. I mean, I see tests in Kenya going in the region of, is it 13 or 15,000? Mm -hmm. That's a bit tidy. But, you know, they have since acquired um, a quicker testing kit. And this is what's been rolled out in the community in large numbers. So... And, and then they've also opened centers in different places in the communities. However, just as the rest of the world is sort of selecting who goes in for testing, um, you have to be referred. You must have, uh, you know, symptoms that are suggestive of um, suspected corona. Mm -hmm. Only then are you are you tested. So you can't just walk in and say, I want to be tested for this. No, you'd have been a doctor, mm -hmm. and then the doctor would examine you and then write a referral. Note. Okay. When when the yeah. rapid test kits are being deployed, who is who's using them uh, in the in the townships at the local level? So, so at the local level, what's happening is um, South Africa is actually quite advanced in using these kits with healthcare workers, and they've got clinics literally down to the local community level. Mm -hmm. So it's these healthcare workers that are using or doing the tests in in, in those local levels. They've got clinics literally all over. So at least in terms of that manpower, we can say, um, you know, they, they, they're, they're very helpful. Mm -hmm. but the only thing that surprised me yesterday, and, and probably it's not a surprise knowing what's happened in Europe, you know, the minister announced that um, 66 uh, COVID cases that were reported in Durban City um, in the past few days. I mean, of those 66, 48 were healthcare workers. So, you know, it would wow. also mean that it's very important that healthcare workers get uh, protected mm -hmm. as they do the examination of these patients because that's 72.7% of the cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and this, this exposes the issue of medical workers not having enough protective equipment. Exactly. Exactly. That is the, the, the real issue. And, and you know, initially... Uh, Initially, you'd expect this to have happened because there is a lack of understanding of, you know, how severe this thing is. Yeah. And, you know, hospitals had not um, put in a fund, you know, that supports this kit. We also didn't have the rapid test. So there's a lot of things that have since changed. And um, I think going forward, 
it's now becoming very clear that protective equipment is is key. What is sufficient uh, protective uh, equipment, Professor? Is it uh, that space suit that we are seeing them wearing, or is it mm-hmm. it's is it just a, is a mask enough for for doctors and medics? Um, I think uh, I think masks and you know masks and uh, they've got their gown yeah. that covers them all over. Yeah. I think that's what they would need. I mean, you've seen the way uh, uh, well in Italy or in Europe. It, it, it's a bit more intense because, you know, they cover the whole body. But you see, from what I've seen in here, you know, it's just mask and the, uh, the gear that covers uh, a greater part of their body. So that, that should be, you know, that should be sufficient. Great. Professor, we want to thank you very much for speaking to us today. Thanks, Prof. Welcome. Welcome. We will call you again at some point next week. No, that's fine. For and you stay, stay away from COVID. Yes. Thank you. You too, Prof. <laughs> Thank you. All professor right. Kennedy Otwombe is uh, the, an associate professor, perinatal HIV research unit at the School of Public Health, University of Witwatersrand in South Africa. He is a man who's uh, following up this issue for us in that country and in the southern region of Africa. Shortly after this commercial break, we will be speaking to Dr. Marcy Korir, KTN's medical journalist, to get the latest from what uh, she uncovered at Kemru yesterday on the issue of the rapid test kits. We've been hearing that that's what is being deployed in South Africa and it's working very well. So how soon do we expect to get those in Kenya? Good morning. It's half past nine. Okay, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, we're looking at good uh, situations all over, good t- good conditions to whip out and get something done and be back. Traffic will not affect you. So it looks good all over the city today. We know that uh, in Mombasa, it's looking a bit dicey, especially with what is happening around the ferry. Um, uh, it's going to come to the point where we heard that it's going to come all to a halt so there was a bit of a hold up there this morning has eased up a little bit but likely to cramp up a little bit later but for now everything is looking good right around the country except for the little problem spot that we've seen in Mombasa there and about let us know anything out of the ordinary you know it spice of mke on twitter up your life mature intelligent talk every morning let's now spice up yourself medical journalist good morning Kari. dr Masi. mornings done right 94.4 <laughs> spice <laughs> she had stepped out for a bit <laughs> no 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 <laughs> ah, voila, what, what happened uh, good morning uh-huh. <laughs> good morning um uh, the spice of um uh Bumper, is it bumper? I don't know what you call it on radio. Mm. It was still loud. I couldn't hear you. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah, but, but, but now I can hear you. Good morning, everyone. How are you, Dr. Ari? I'm very well, thank you. Good. Eric wants to jump yes. right into it, but I think we can ask the first question then. This rapid okay. kit, rapid testing in Kenya, is it going to happen mm-hmm. or is it a pipe dream? And what is it? And what um, is it all about? Okay, okay so I, th- I think there's two things mm-hmm. and uh, I think what, what, one of the things uh, I, I, I'm still trying to understand what the CS understood by rapid. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is a rapid testing kit which is like the HIV kit mm-hmm. where um, you check for antibodies. If somebody had already been infected or is actively infected so they have antibodies then you check. 
and it's a quick three to fifteen minute test that you, that the plan is to have it as a self testing kit. Then there is the automated PCR testing. Now the auto, the current testing that is ongoing where it goes to a lab and then it goes to a process which mm-hmm. takes about four hours mm-hmm. to get a result. So what is happening currently is manual. But now, yesterday night, Kemri mm-hmm. was telling me they were expecting um, what they call extraction reagents. Mm-hmm. Now, when the Jack Ma donations came in, the African BC and WHO, uh, they did not have enough extraction reagents. And this one are the ones that uh, extract the... for simple terms, the DNA of the virus so that it is able to be picked when you run it through the machine. Mm -hmm. So that is what they were expecting. And now, when they got them last night, then this process can be automated. And when it's automated, it takes about 30 minutes to get a result. Mm -hmm. So now there there are those two. So I think, in my opinion, the CS meant the automated machine because now the results will be rapid. Mm-hmm. Every 30 minutes, you will have results of whatever samples you are running. And this now, we have capacity to do at least 10,000 a day mm-hmm. as long as the samples are being collected. Okay. So I, that is already in place. That one, we have capacity, we have staff, we have everything to do that. Now, the other one, the rapid testing, which is what you are finding out in Camry, is, is work in progress, and they said they are evaluating the processes and everything. So by next week, they will have an answer mm-hmm. on whether now we can we can start. Okay. So in terms of being able to produce this rapid testing kit so that millions of Kenyans can test, they have the capacity to do that, and they can do several hundreds of thousands in a day to produce those kits for people to be able to to test. Mm. So there are those two things, and I hope uh, we have some clarity on it. How long would this take, the the, the new one, the one that's in progress? The one, how long will it take to do what? To get those things run up and running. It is already up and running. They are waiting for the extraction reagents. No, no, so no, that no, that one. The one, the one uh-huh. that you are following up at Kia with Camry yesterday. They're rapid. Mm. Yes. You will know by next week. Because uh, they are still evaluating some things because they, they are telling me they need to be very sure of the accuracy mm-hmm. of the test. Because you do not want a test that says you are negative and, and yet, yet you are positive. If you're positive. Yeah, so, so they are like this one, they, they are taking some time just to be sure about that. But anyway, in the meantime, we, we have the, rap, the automated machines, which across the country can do at least 10,000. And then we have the 187 gene expert machines across the country. Those ones have capacity to do about 3,700 in a day. Then add the National Influenza Laboratory, so we can do even 15,000 mm-hmm. tests in a day across the country. But then there's... And you see, at, at the moment, we do not have so many tests to do, so we are able to, to handle that um, in terms of the lab processes. Mm. But now, where the, where the challenge is, yeah. sorry, Eric, where the challenge is, is the logistics of going to get the sample from the patient. That's what I wanted to then, bring in. Yeah. Yes. So that is now the thing actually that has been taking, that has been making the whole process lengthy. Because uh, in terms of staff that need to go and get the sample, they're mm. not enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of what they are calling the transport media, but now Cambridge is producing it, the one that will transport the sample from the patient to the lab mm-hmm. for a challenge. And then now just the logistics and our inefficiencies of bureaucracies and, you know, all of those things that delay things for no good reason, actually. So that is where the bottlenecks are. But in terms of the lab process itself, it is quick. Mm. Yeah, and, and at, at least I've seen Cambry themselves and they're, they're efficient in terms of the turnaround time in the lab. So when the CS was talking about this, even last week, saying that they're going to go into mass testing of people um, and random mm-hmm. testing and random uh, those screening, and then he started talking about testing. Mm-hmm. What was he referring to? Um, I, I do not hold brief for the CS here, <laughs> but <laughs> in, 
in my opinion, mm. the the you know when you say mass testing, respect all Kenyans. Yeah. But that testing was supposed to be the people in quarantine. Okay. But when you say rapid testing, what I know, and even the people on the ground know, is the automated testing. So that is that is the one that is work in progress. So next, if by the end of next week he says now we are doing mass testing, mass rapid testing, and Cambria said they have the capacity to, yeah. then now yeah. we will put two and two together and we will say now we are doing mass rapid testing. But for now it is still the lab process only that it is automated and faster than the four hours, six hours you've been seeing. Uh, you know, when you use some technical terms, sometimes it may not be understood by all our listeners. When we say screening, what do we mean? Okay, this screening, and the screening that Kenya has been doing is taking people's temperatures. Mm. Mm. So that somebody who has a uh, spiking, who has fever, then uh, your temperature is more than 37 35 38 and above, then you are, um, you are, you are suspect or there, there's something wrong with you because with the coronavirus, this particular one, uh, the first symptom that they have picked across the globe is that rise, it, rise in temperature, people having a fever. So that is the screening that we've been talking about. And so people should not think the screening and the testing is the same thing. Now, the testing that has been happening in this country has been for suspected cases, at least from the government side. Mm. Uh, in the private sector, there have been uh, people who have met the criteria in one way or another. But for the government, have been the contacts of the people who have been confirmed or those who are in mandatory quarantine. Those are the people who have been tested. And testing here means they have taken a sample from up your nose or down your throat and taken it to the lab mm. to check if the virus is present or not. So that is that is it. But now I've, I've been wondering um, about the effectiveness of this screening and temperature because yesterday I went to an institution mm. and my temperature was 35.7 mm. mm. and I'm still alive and walking. Yeah, right. So, so, <laughs> so I don't know. Is, about that, this is, that, is 35.7, what does it, what does it no. indicate? You're too cold. No, no, that is too cold. I should be, <laughs> normally it's about 36.5 to 37.5. And then you see people, the people who have been mandated to do that screening, mm. I think are just doing it as a routine. It's point where and shoot, basically, <laughs> in this case. Yeah, and you, you fill the book and you move on mm. to the next person, to the next uh, visitor. So for me, well, I, uh, I I wouldn't really rely a lot on those screening mechanisms. Mm. If if I were the government, I would put my efforts more on contact tracing everyone mm. who has come in contact with the people who've been confirmed, because that is the only way now you widen that net and you get as many people as possible. Second mm. is to make sure that um, Camry works harder and gets these rapid diagnostic kits because it means people in the red zone, we who are in the Nairobi metropolitan area, Kilifi, Mombasa, Kuale, now possibly Mandera, all of us can access these kits we test. And if you're positive, you stay put until for 14 days and then we can do, we can now start emerging from quarantine. Mm. So those, those are the measures, in my opinion, which will yield something tangible than, than this. So like, for example, you get a screen and the thermometer reads 35.7, who is to say that you do not have a temperature of 38? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You could still pass because there's a faulty thermometer or the user doesn't know how to use it, you know? So mm. just to be so clear, what... Put more effort. Uh -huh. what what's, what's, the, what's good temperature? 36.5 to 37.5. Okay. Anything between 36.5 to 37.5, that's that's normal. Okay. I know we are used to seeing 37, but in medicine, it's always a range because mm. nothing is uh, static. Okay. Uh, another question that we have now. Are medical ethics being flouted by revealing the names and identities of those who may have been infected? Um... It depends on who is revealing the identity. Mm. 
if I have been confirmed as COVID positive and I come out and I'm like, I'm COVID positive, A, B, C, and D, it's within my right to say it. But I do not expect that the government, the Ministry of Health, will come and say, so patient one or so and so two, blah, 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 mm. all the way. That's now, uh, that's now not right. Because mm. it should be on an, it should be an individual. Mm. Be but mm. in a case, yeah, it should be voluntary. In, in a case where public health interest overrides individual interest, then they should reveal. Mm -hmm. For right. example, now the, the governor. The, the, the Kilifi deputy governor, yep. where now he had been in so many uh, public events, mm. it was important for people who had met him to know. Then in that case, then the government can disclose. Mm. Okay. So it depends. And then now for ex another example is, if this story of the members of, yes, of the parliament mm. is true that we have so many, then we should be informed because these are um, one people of public interest. Yeah. Two, they meet a lot of wananchi. They have a lot of wananchi working for them as if there's a whole web of people. So it's only important that they reveal who these particular members are for the sake of all the people in those circles because they are likely to be more. Mm. So now it, it depends on the public interest that we are looking at at mm. that particular point and on the individual being focused on. Okay. Yeah. All right. Looking at the mental health of workers in the front line, um, we have one um, health worker who's written in asking a question saying, I'm currently on quarantine after attending to a confirmed case. It's really stressful and lots of anxiety and panic attacks. Will there be provision for making sure that there's counseling for health workers as well? Yeah. Um, the, okay, for me, this is really unfortunate mm. that uh, healthcare workers have not been furnished with information on where to seek help mm. because these are the people who need to come and help us um, on the other end because I, uh, after quarantine, I'm sure this particular healthcare worker would be, if they're cleared, they would be back on the front line mm. attending to us. And so healthcare workers should be a priority. And we've seen so many countries putting their healthcare workers as a priority mm. in everything. Mm. Even in the economic times, mm. giving them in terms of social protection in their own way, uh, compensation, keeping them in the front lines and all of that. Mm. And uh, mental health is one of the things that uh, we, we don't really uh, focus on so much. Mm -hmm. But for this particular person, I see, you see, I think it's level nine mm. by, I'm trying to remember if it's Red Cross or AMREF, where they have counseling services. Mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. you can really check for us there. Mm. Um, 11.99 should be the number where anyone in need of counseling services can call in mm. to speak to a counselor who will guide them or help them. Dr. Masi, I, I need to ask this. Is there a, uh -huh. a counseling protocol for COVID-19? I have not seen it. City have not seen a, any counseling protocol. And I think what has happened is they've left it to the individual, to the individual facilities to work it out. Like, for example, at uh, KNH Mbagasi Isolation Unit, they have counselors attached. Hmm. But these counselors... I know are attending to the patients. Mm -hmm. So I don't know who's attending to the healthcare, the workers. healthcare workers themselves. Yeah. So I, I have not seen a protocol myself. If it's there and it has been uh, developed and we, d we have not come in touch or in contact with it, somebody can please share with us. But I've not seen it. There's a mountain of documents always coming in, but I've not seen one on counseling. Mm. If, they, if indeed there isn't one, then it means there is no uniformity in the way patients as well, patients across the board, whether they're health workers or not, are actually counseled. That would be very true. That would be very true. Mm. And I think uh, from what I have seen so far, we are reactionary. Mm. <laughs> like so, something happens, then we run and do guidelines and protocols. Yeah. And a good example is on the quarantine one. Mm. After people tested positive in some quarantine centers, 
and we had stories of people who had who had a bash. Then shortly after that, we there was guidelines on what to do in quarantine facilities, a whole document. Mm. So I was wondering when we were putting people in mandatory quarantine, didn't we think that they would need guidelines to, to put it together? Yes, so, indeed. Exactly, so that we do not subject people to another mandatory 14 day which, in my opinion, I'm yet to get the science of it. Mm. Mm. Because the only way it is making sense to me is if, one, you do not know who is positive and who is negative, which I'm hoping is not the case, mm. or two, um, you do not know who the positive people met. Or, they, or they, you've mixed up the results. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping that is not <laughs> the case because that will be very <laughs> tragic. <laughs> Uh, I've pulled out the information that you had shared earlier and uh, the counseling. It's actually being offered by the Kenya Red Cross here. Yes, um, yes. It says call 1199 for free counseling or any necessary yes. referral and linkage to, for psychological support. Yes. So the number again to call is 1199, that's double one double nine, to call for free counseling, any necessary re referral and linkages mm -hmm. for psychological support. Let's take a short break, Dr. Masti, so you can have a sip of water. we come back and you'll have to answer a couple more questions. Okay. 10 minutes to 10. FM, Nakuru. Online, mobile, and on radio. Twitter at Spice FM KE. Spice up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. All right, continuing with the questions with Ask Dr. Mercy this morning in the presentation room. And uh, as we go to the next question, um, having been in quarantine for a while and then um, uh, after being told to self-isolate rather for a while, can I then just go about my normal business now or do I need to seek a doctor's um, opinion? Um, I think after self, after quarantine and the additional uh, seven days that I, I saw in the Ministry of Health guidelines, uh, one should be free because if you have not developed any symptoms and if you are negative, mm. then one should not leave in fear. Mm. And then I think uh, we have, uh, okay, the virus is bad, yes, but there are worse things also. So I think once somebody has been cleared, they've not developed any symptoms, mm -hmm. they should not be in fear of moving about and interacting mm -hmm. with other people because they, then it will be okay. Mm -hmm. be okay. I, I don't think, I think um, at this point, we may not be able to do the confirmatory to actually confirm that one is negative on two consecutive days. Um, so in my opinion, if you have tested negative, you fulfilled your quarantine and you're still negative, then you're free to move around. I think that my fear with this is just that uh, people stigmatizing the people who were in quarantine or people who had been confirmed as positive because they, they, are, they are unsure of the status of these people. But scientifically, somebody is okay. Okay. Um, and then another one, I think, because we've seen three or so of the same question. If I wanted to go and have a test for myself, can I get one done? Um, currently, tests, okay, at least from the government side, uh, you tests are not done on demand. Um, somebody has to meet the case definition. Remember that uh, these tests are not in plenty. Whatever we have now is limited. There are 1,000 or so tests that we have. So 
once somebody has to meet the case criteria, the case definition, where you've come in contact with somebody who's just a positive or taking care of them, or if you have the symptoms, then now you can you can qualify to the test. And in private facilities, I think uh, if you have the symptoms and you can pay, mm. I think um, they'll allow for the private facilities. I don't know if it's still the case. Mm-hmm. But also, the, the, the criteria was a bit strict. You cannot just walk in and say, I want to be tested, but you have to meet a certain criteria. Mm-hmm. And one of them was that you have symptoms at the very least. Mm-hmm. Dr. Yeah. Masi Karir, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for the time. This was very brief. Yes, yes. indeed. We'll speak with you again tomorrow uh, from 9.30 as well. Mm-hmm. All questions okay. are to be answered by Dr. Masi. Okay. Do- ask Dr. Masi. This is a situation room. It's Kenya's biggest conversation. Of course, you can uh, keep uh, tweeting Dr. Masi at Dr. Masi Career at Spice FM KE and also on uh, our Facebook page, Spice FM KE, where she'll be able to respond to all your questions uh, that you ask regarding COVID 19. The fight against COVID, I mean, this is war, right? Mm-hmm. Um, every it's, it's little measure that needs to be put in place must be put in place. We need also to keep reminding ourselves that, yes, we have a lot of uh, work to do, we as citizens, but also we need to remind the government that it also has a lot of work to do. Don't just sit there and tell us, now, we want you to do this, and then you sit back. No. No. Nope. That's why you're government. (laughs) There are certain things that you need (laughs) to do. Yes. Yeah, I'm just looking at then what their responsibility is, and I think we can't harp enough then on what citizen responsibility is here and it's simple things now in the beginning of all of this or when it kind of um, mushroomed and bloomed in kenya where we are speaking specifically to um in terms of country space and boundaries and all of this it wasn't clear what the messaging was in terms of what you can do but it's clear now in terms of maintaining social distance Mm. avoid public gatherings we've seen that that has been shut down wash your hands sanitize Maintain social distance. There are things that you can do. Now, and we need to mask. get to the point and now wear a mask. Mm. Actually, you, you don't know? stop. Don't stop. We need to continue you, you, talking you about do this. do not stop. Yeah, because, if, because it's a bit, a, today a little bit worrying more than yesterday because we find that, I mean, across Buddha said, okay, if it was in a, in a targeted place where people still have the belief that mm. this thing actually doesn't exist. But then we see it in different pockets of the country it's where people are saying, you know what? Ah, you people are making noise Your over something that doesn't Yenu. exist. Actually, actually, remember, say it enough. the attitude isn't very different from that of the people in leadership. Mm. It's the manifestation that is different. Mm. You have a problem and people are still talking. So you're saying it. it's possible talking. that the people in leadership also don't believe this COVID-19 is there. Yeah, I it's mean, an opportunity it, for us to make money. Let's see how we can make money through yes, talking. Mm. Yes. And Instead then, of realizing that you may be dead. <laughs> so, 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 so that money will not be very useful to, mm. you, to you. Where you go you know, once you're dead. Mm. But also, I want to address uh, some of our listeners who feel that perhaps we're not kicking the government adequately in the teeth. Mm. Uh, there's a time for everything. There's a time when you bite and blow. Yep. There's a time you bite and you add pili pili. Mm. The situation we have right now, we look at the common enemy that we have. Mm. And we pull our resources to fight this enemy. Mm. When you have national government representatives in the counties doing what they can and assisting, we praise them and tell them this. If there's something they're doing wrong, we say, look, we understand you meant well, this is what you're doing wrong, yep. but you should do this. Mm-hmm. It is a process and an opportunity for us to change many things that we've gotten wrong over the years. Mm-hmm. And this is not an opportunity we should miss. And I yeah. think just like the people of Mombasa have realized, Governor Joho is telling us, look, we have come together uh, across the board. People from across the divide are sitting, people who are o- opposing me vehemently. We are sitting together, we are discussing, and we are saying our uh, united approach is going to be this. Mm. And people are, you know, agreeing and saying, yes, let's take that direction. Maybe all of us as a country, it's about time that we say, all right, if all of us came together and agreed, like we did in 2002, right? right? Yes. <laughs> if all of us came together and agreed, this is our enemy, we need to fight COVID-19. The little that I can do, I'm going to do. Right? It's possible. It's can. possible for us to eradicate. Oh, it's this very possible. Mm. It's very, it. very possible. And and Kenyans are usually very ready and willing and resilient it's, it's too. to participate. Yes. Just look at what's happening with the governor Joe. Mm. People who are telling us already that they were opponents of Joe. And they I was his and critic. They say, no, yeah. but we like what the man is doing. Yeah. So let's He's go. leading from the front. Mm. Uh, you see, while we're at it, we might as well also thank the county commissioner for Mombasa. Yes. This discipline, a gentleman by the name of John Elongata. Mm. 
in the absence of his help, this this would not have come no, to no, me. No. And Joho mentioned it. He talked yes. about it. John yeah. Elongata, congratulations as well. As yes. we coming to the end of the show, today's uh, proverb. Today's proverb. Okay, it is the crooked wood that shows the best sculptor. Mm -hmm. Explain. When you want to create something artistic out of wood, usually people want something straight. So you carve it to your satisfaction and to your desire. But if it's crooked, it's already pointing in the direction it wants to go. Mm. So for you to be able to actually create what you want, you have to be very deft. You have to be very, 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 very mobile and very agile mm. in maneuvering and managing these situations. The situation we're in now, you're managing people, you're managing the disease, you're managing resources. This is crooked wood. And this is what will tell us who the leaders actually are. Thank you very much, CT, for that one. We wait to hear tomorrow's proverb. Ndu? Isolate, sanitize, maintain. Well, where? Remember that all the time. Join us again tomorrow, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Between now and 2 o'clock, uninterrupted music, 2 to 6. Monique will be here to take you home. And then the adults in the room are back from 7 to 10 p.m. Good morning. It's now 10 a.m. Uh -huh.